Talk then. Someone should talk. And it's obviously already, already a shambles. Can you believe that? I, I, I'm amazed that we're back on the air and it's already a shambles. What are you doing? What? What are you talking about? I'm talking, the, no one was speaking, the record was ending, the, no one was speaking, it was just Kate. Well, I might shut off. <laughs> already, I might shut off. It's Very like we, nothing's changed. Boys are back in town on XFM 104.9. We're back then, aren't we, Carl? Mm. I'm Ricky Gervais, with me Stephen Merchant and Carl Pilkington. I'm not coming back, I'm definitely not coming back. Oh, 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 care, care someone, care that I'm not coming back. Rick, Although I seem to remember the end of, yeah, the end of the last time we were on, what yeah. was that, three months ago? Yeah, three months Carl ago. Carl said he's never gonna do the show again, there yeah. was nothing that was gonna bring him back, yeah. he didn't enjoy it, wasn't gonna do it. All the rules, right? Really? Yes, um, I've, I've known him coming back for so about two months, you know, cause he's got our agent now, representing him. <laughs> I, I thought he was a fool, really. Why? Well, what, what's yeah. he done for me? What's well, he done for us? No, I know, but I mean, he's, he's your agent, so, uh, and he's sort of calling Graham, and it was all a con, so Carl could get Mondays off. Poor Graham, the station's struggling enough as it is. Yeah. It's like running around like a headless chicken. Yeah. No one's listening, no one's listening. That's why I don't bother talking on the record then, because it, there's, no, it's, there's no loss sure. to London. <laughs> sure. Right? It's, it's, it's pointless, this show. We don't do it for the money, we don't do it for the kudos. I don't know why we do it. No. Is there anything on telly at this time? I'm gonna have to lie in. I know. But, um, it's all a ruse to get Mondays. He's got Mondays off now, because he has to do the show, two hours, Tonight. right? And he's still getting paid, and it's all a con because he knows that he's holding him over a barrel, and he's, uh, it's like, oh, we've got to keep Carl happy. Mm. Right? I, I had, I had Mondays and Tuesdays off before Duncan got involved. <laughs> 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 no, do you know what I mean, though? And it's like, poor Graham, who's the MD, the, uh, in charge of the thing, probably pulling his hair out, worrying about the station, right? You know, it's a sinking ship. And then Carl comes and well I, I, you know, I'll do it, but I want Mandas off. They, uh, he's probably sitting home now, his family, he's probably ridiculed by yeah. his well, wife. Well, his kids almost certainly would have lost all respect for him. He's, he's been fooled by Carl Pilkington. He calls his mates and says, oh, I'm, I'm busy, Graham, I don't, yeah. you know, I just can't think. Uh, it's just- It's, it's embarrassing. Just, but it's, do you know what I mean? And you think it's funny, and you think you've got one over him, he's going, oh, Mandas off for two hours. Yeah, you do, yeah, you do, you think, like, and now you're now embarrassed because you're on air. But uh -huh. you're only, you're only, you're only conning yourself in the long run, because, do you know what I mean? It, it, it's, I hate that sort of, the world owes me a living, how much can I get, what can I get out of the world? What are you gonna give back to the world, Carl? What are you doing now then? Are you gonna prepare Mondays? No, I told you what I have you prepared for this show now? You've had three months to prepare. Yeah. What have you, what have you got? What have you got for us? Okay, what's happened in the last three months? Uh, what? In this place or just my life? Well, what have you got for us? We've three months, we're turning about, you get Mondays off, you're getting paid for it, you've got a cushy deal, you're having a laugh, you're taking the piss out of the management, right? So, what have you got for us? Give it to us. We've, we, I've kind of, uh, updated Rockbusters a bit. <laughs> right? Brilliant. Yeah. Right? So, and uh, you said don't mess with it. If something's good, don't mess with it. What do you mean it wasn't good? <laughs> it was never good. It was never good. No, of course we had good. to fix it. It was fun to do. It was a laugh. I mean, much more, I imagine it was much more fun for me than the 450 <laughs> listeners. <laughs> I like, you know what I mean? I enjoyed it. I enjoyed squeezing your head and dressing you up. No, but that's just it. When I had a meeting with, with Graham, right, I said, look, I'm not being funny. I don't want to do it anymore. Yeah. I've had enough of it. Yeah. And he was like, oh, what's up with you? you? You sounds like you have a right good laugh. I said, yeah, but that's, that's, you know, that's all good acting and stuff. I said, it's hell in there. <laughs> um, I said, like I, he's talking about Vietnam. Yeah. I it's said, like having, get... having my head squoze, right? <laughs> What? Squares! Squares is squares. still not a word. We've been away three months, it's still not a word. Right? Yeah. I said he's putting a dustbin lid on my head. Yeah. <laughs> you told this to the end, he's, he's hitting me with a tray. Yeah. Uh, he's chucking toilet paper at me. Yeah. And he said, yeah, but that's all over two years. I said, no, that was the same day. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay then, what has changed in three months? It's like they're listening, they've been listening for six minutes now. Come on, give us something. Bit of Nickelback. What's, <laughs> no, what's happened in three we'll days? Play a record well, what, what, three months. What in my life or yeah. in here? Nothing's yeah. happened there. Nothing's changed there. Right. But I don't know. What? Well, well, uh, do you know? Do you know? Last time we were on. Yeah. Right. And uh, I was telling you about the woman over the road, where what? I live. The one that walked around naked. There's a woman who walks about the flat oh, naked. This right? is when uh, Carl was watching a woman naked. Then she looked at. So, saw him looking, so what he did, this is the genius he did to get out of this, he pulled his pants down so he was naked too. <laughs> his girlfriend comes in and goes, Carl, what are you doing? He went, I can't tell you now, but don't look out of the window. <laughs> yeah, go on, sorry. That woman, she's, uh, she's bought some blinds. <laughs> Oh,
Nickelback, someday on XFM 104.9. How old's the bloke from Nickelback? He looks know. about 40. It reminds me of, um, uh, you know when a kid's made up a fate to look like a lion? <laughs> yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's like, like, the Wizard of Oz lion. Yeah. But, you know, good tune. No, uh, I'll be controversial. I think rock rules the world again, Steve. Well, I hope so, mate. I hope so. Do you know so. what I mean? Are we gonna hear some rock later in the show? We're gonna hear lots of rock. Excellent. In fact, I might even play a little bit of Rainbow. Blimey. Just to, you know, rewind. We've got the darkness, but sure. I want to remind them where it all came from. Yeah. You've heard the Liz. Yeah, yeah. You're gonna hear the bow. Cheers, mate. Thanks for that. Um, no, just high five. Yeah, 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 So, Carl. Yeah, keep it real. Here we are then. Oh, Back. incidentally, before we uh, Go carry on. on, I just thought, um, it's weird, I was reading some of the fan emails and stuff we've got, and one of the things a lot of people like, it actually it divides the listeners, is your laugh. It's interesting. Some people love it, they find it infectious, they yeah. find it adorable. I mean, close up in a small space, like a kitchen or something, it's annoying. Like, Horrific. Carl was annoyed, because I squeaked in his ear earlier, didn't I? Sure. Why did I laugh? He was on the toilet. <laughs> I think I squeezed his head again, didn't I? And he said, no, it's not one o'clock He doesn't yet. like the squeezing. The squeezing head. But, yeah. Um, but it's the squeezing one. The funny thing is, right, we were out a few weeks ago with, with a mate of mine, mm. right, and uh, he went to sque squeeze me head, mm -hmm. right, give, give it a squeeze. Sure. And uh, I was like, don't do that. You know, you know I don't like it, right? And Ricky said to me, mate, yeah, he doesn't like having his head squeeze. As if it's like Marmite. As if, <laughs> as if some people love it. Yeah, yeah. And some people hate it. Sure. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, anyway, yeah. there's but there's there was a little taster of the laugh. That was more <laughs> the kind of deep throaty laugh, the belly yeah. laugh. But there's that kind of high peach squeak that you do. Well, I've got to get air out quickly because exactly. I'm going to burst. Sometimes I laugh so much that my liver and all like, they try and get out to it. So I have to get out really fast, like a like a siren. Right. Do you know what I mean? Is that <laughs> is that how you explain the fact that you're you're quite fat? Yeah, it's that's actually laugh. that's just laughing waiting <laughs> to come out. Every yeah. time you laugh, you, you become a svelte young thing like <laughs> yeah. Brett Anderson. Oh dear. Well, anyway, it reminded me of the uh, the game that you you and I used to play in our very early days of XFM when it was literally make Ricky Gervais laugh. Make Ricky Gervais laugh, which Lovely. was a great game. I think I remember the first one. It was that fella drinking a pint of beer. Yeah, I remember yeah. the very first time. Yeah. Never, I tell you what, it's you not know what great. though. Ant and Deck do it now. They do. They? they actually. It's very similar to make Ricky laugh. It's called make Ant laugh. <laughs> Interesting. So so many of our great ideas have been uh, have been stolen. Yeah, or stoled. Stoled. Yeah. And anyway, I just I was looking through the paper in the week and there was Go a picture on. which um. <laughs> Which I think might, it might be a Ricky Gervais, <laughs> make Ricky Gervais laugh, I don't know. And again, obviously it doesn't really work for the listeners at home, but I'll try and do my best to describe it. Can it's we stop saying my name, because it's like a Dave Gorman project? Can we just stop, let's, I, it's getting, it, you know, if they say a word often enough, it doesn't mean anything. Yeah. Let's stop saying Ricky Gervais. Well, what are we going to refer to you as? <laughs> Alright, well, make Patty laugh <laughs> is, um, <laughs> is a new, a new game. I'm trying to get one of those squeaks of a laugh. I'm okay. concerned because well, I know. I, I, no, I'm not going to. I'm not a monkey. I'm not <laughs> sure, a performing, you're not a performing monkey. Well, no, okay. I know that. Right. But anyway, let me um. just briefly summarise the story <laughs> okay. for those at home. Okay. The uh, the headline was Mum 48, a mother of 48 seduced boy of 14. <laughs> well, that's not funny. Not her own boy, obviously, but uh, uh, no, a child, a neighbourhood child. Um, I don't think it's a funny said, story so far. He said, Grand Lana Allen, 48, led him upstairs and undressed to her waist. Then took his trousers off. <laughs> okay, bear that in mind. This, <laughs> this is a is quote. This is a quote from him. Right. right? Bear in mind, he's a fourteen-year-old boy. He's quite excited about this. He yeah. says, "Then we had sex. It was every boy's fantasy." <laughs> All right. You're going to show me the picture of her now. Aren't so you? it's a picture of her. Oh, this is not. Bear right. in mind. This is. Okay. In his own words, Rick. Right. In his own <laughs> words, this was every boy's <laughs> fantasy. Okay. Okay. Here's the picture. It's a silent laugh. He's collapsed on the floor. I wasn't expecting that! <laughs> I wasn't expecting- I was thinking it looked like a fat man! I was not expecting that! Oh my god! Oh god! She looks like the drummer of Iron Maiden! That's <laughs> what she looks a bit like Lemmy! <laughs> but, I tell you she looks like- she <laughs> make, reminds me of most. Did you see I those- I don't think they've got her with a fag on as well! <laughs> no, I know! It's just the- uh, the actual of them out of makeup though. Carl, have you seen yeah. every boy's fantasy? You should see- you should see- <laughs> Oh, oh God! Oh. Oh. oh, oh God! How old is she? <laughs> forty-eight. Oh, oh God! Oh, forty-eight. <laughs> That's lovely. Nothing wrong, with, nothing wrong with that. I'll but... tell you, if you don't know what, if you didn't see, you weren't lucky enough <sighs> to see the picture. She looks <sighs> just like the um, oldest man in the world. His photos on uh, in newspapers and on the oh. web for a while. He was about one hundred and thirty-five yes, or no, something. Hang on, look, here, Carl. Here, look. It's, you know, Carl, Carl's got a theory that Chinese people don't age well. This man was a, he was uh 
uh, a Chinaman, <laughs> right? And he was a hundred and twenty or something. Yeah. Mm. Did was... you see a picture of him? Yeah, he's he still alive. alive. No, he's not. No, he's no, dead. He's not. No, he's dead. Died. Yeah, I died at 120, so. He said 120 or something, but makes you wonder. Go what on. makes you wonder? Well, because they don't age well. <laughs> I think he's using that. <laughs> what? He's probably about, about so 37. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God! Honestly, we walk down the street, right, and we see a, 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 an elderly Chinese person. Yeah. Right? And, um, and you kind of go, oh, I'm just thinking he is. Yeah. Like, it, it's not. <laughs> I don't understand <laughs> this, this notion that Chinese people don't age yeah. well. I don't know what, that... where this has come from. Oh. No, I, I mean, I'm not having a go. No, right? no. I, don't, I, don't, I never want anyone to think I'm, I'm like having a go at them. But yeah. they are really good looking and they're healthy and that. <laughs> till they're about... <laughs> I, I've never seen one, right? Can you, <laughs> can you, <laughs> can you tell me if you've seen a Chinese person no. who's about 30? Well, it's always, it's either 20 <laughs> or 50. There's no middle ground. <laughs> This is two hours of absolute drivel but from sorry, the brain of Carl Wilkinson. Let me just check something. So oh. the guy, the Chinese gentleman who died recently, was 130. Mm, your well. theory is, <laughs> sure, your theory is that he's maybe in his late 30s, early 40s. Yeah. This is an elaborate conspiracy on his part because obviously, whenever they talk about the oldest people in the world, it is always a Chinese person. Yeah, invariably they, they do. Yeah, I mean they mm. seem to win that okay. every year. Go on. So your theory is that in those small backwater the, villages oh, in China, Ross McWhorter comes to a little yeah, village. Yeah, they go. And and they, he goes, he goes ah, well, until recently, the oldest person in the world. Like, How old are you? And they're so embarrassed because they think they look about under twenty. They go. Uh, under 120, they go, really? Go, yeah, can I have his birth certificate now? In fact, I think this Chinese bloke didn't, he, it wasn't verified with the conspiracy papers because he didn't have his papers. Didn't have his papers, no. So. Is this the same one or a different fellow? I think trying it might it be on. the same guy, I'm not sure. <laughs> Try it on. <laughs> <laughs> so there's, an in, there's a huge conspiracy amongst these Chinese villages that Look, every when time. When you get uh, to about 50, say you're 70. Because no one will believe us. Well, if you can confirm or deny that, then, uh, then please email in ricky.gervais at xfm.uk. This is the racist Joe on XFM 104.9. Call in if you're anything less than a little mank. Outcast, hey ya, on XFM 104.9. With me, Ricky Gervais. You, Stephen Merchant, GQ presenters of the year. Radio personalities of the year. It's official. We're uh, the best radio personalities of the year. I've, I, um, we got that award sent to us, didn't we? We yeah. did a little thing. But it was only our two names on it. It so had your name, Rick, definitely. I remember that. It had my and name. The, and your name. Didn't see Carl Ferguson's name anyway. No. Anywhere. And yet he's the one with the day off and the money and the, the, the con and the MD and making him cry at home. Let me just mate. remind, Go can on. I just check that Go again? He, so he's made a fool out of the MD he's made a fool and out all of the MD, major, all basically this, all the capital all this shit shareholders. About, oh, I'm not sure if I'm coming back or not. I want, okay, I want a day off then, which is the same day off as his girlfriend gets off. So Convenient. he's just like walking around, I don't know, Hyde Park, yeah. just feeding ducks when yeah. he should be working out what can he can do instead of rockbusters, which is basically blockbusters <laughs> with a word changed. <laughs> Christ's sake. Right, listen. If that's, if that's annoyed you, I'll tell what? you what is really weighing me up. Go on. The last week or so, this postal strike. <laughs> I tell you, Rick, I, I have got no sympathy for him. I'd be a scab. I'd be walking through there and I'd be, <laughs> no, and I'd be giving him the finger. I'd go, you can intimidate my family, I don't care. I don't care because the post has got to get through. Because yeah. I'll tell you what, um, it's, it's, it's not the fact that, uh, you know, the unions, they could organise a strike. I'm behind that, fair enough. But not when it's these wildcats. They're just out there, they're just taking days off willy-nilly, they're not, they're, they're wow. sealing out the post boxes, it's going crazy. Maybe Carl could deliver a few records but, Monday. Well, I know, so I know could... Carl must be livid because he's probably his copies of the New Scientist <laughs> and the Literary Review <laughs> haven't turned up. So he's, he's in a terrible way. And, uh, I got important documents that are supposed to be coming to yeah. me. There's nothing, there's no, yeah. there's hiding the hair of it. And I was cooking last night and I, it got me panicked because I was thinking about if this just is going to spread now amongst other organisations and other yeah. groups. And do you know what? <laughs> Like it's a partly, cancer. It was partly because I was cooking. Yeah. But do you know, I suddenly become terrified that they might go on strike. Go on. The guys in charge of the potatoes. Oh, Every, I mean, what, anyone involved with potatoes. I had so the, much the mash farmers. last night. I had so much sausage mash. Well, I, I, the second helpings that I had to sit on the edge of a seat so my stomach could hang down. It's I love spuds. Spuds and bread. I could not do without but spuds I feel, and bread. I feel like maybe I could make my own bread. Spuds. I wouldn't know where to start with a spud. Yeah. And it's like, you, they're amazing, you can boil them, you can broil them. Yeah. I don't know what broiling is, but I. I, it's, I suspect Doesn't, it's tasty. I don't think it's as good as, I mean, obviously the chipped potato is- For is the working classes, oh, the chip. It was always on, the chip fat fire was always on in my household. The ceiling, the, uh, you know, the, the death trap fire 
um, what's it, polystyrene ceiling <laughs> yeah. was yellow. <laughs> exactly. Um, come yeah. Wednesday in our house. Yeah. And, uh, it, yeah, always had chips. Because all, I, all I remember hearing, if, if I think back to my childhood, all I remember was, um, got to stop and get some potatoes, or phone your dad, tell him to get some potatoes. Well, that was, that was your job, wasn't it? Carl? Yeah, the potatoes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's like, I mean, it genuinely, it does concern me because What did you have to do? Didn't you have to, what, did you have to fill a diary out for your well, teacher? Do you know when you're at school, I don't know if, if you do the same thing, but you, you get like a little red book, right? And every night, I think it was a way of the teachers sort of keeping an eye on you, so if you went out robbing, if you wrote it in your diary, they'd go, what you're playing at? Sure. Right? So you'd have to write down what you did every night. Yeah. But I didn't get up to that much at that point. Sure. I, I used to just go on my errands. Yeah. And it was my job to like- I haven't had errands for since no, the 70s. Nice really. just just got just, on, I went to U-Phase. Right, the little local supermarket, yeah. and I got. Uh, What's it called? Euth euthanasia. <laughs> what? I did. U phase. U new phase. U phase. U phase. Yeah. H U G H. U phase. Oh, U phase. Oh, name. Right. Yeah. yeah. And uh, I just had to right, get. Yeah. I just had to get like a bag of potatoes. Of course you did. Yeah. And a loaf. Staple. So yeah. uh, I used to put that in my diary every day, and it got to a point when like even the teachers were like, just just make something up. Yeah. <laughs> Stop, stop putting the same thing in. I sure, know, start joyriding or something. Live. I'm, I remember wh uh, when James Little, she was at school, I think it was about ten or something, like that, do a project uh, over the week, and they were given a big list, of, like a, a list of a hundred animals mm. that they had to tick when they saw one that week. And the teacher knew she cheated because she ticked beaver. <laughs> so she was trying to win and get it, as you knew. Unless it was Susie Dibblethwaite's beaver. <laughs> oh, I know Dibblethwaite had one. I she don't know, maybe. I don't know, but um, yeah. So uh, uh, I'm just. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just it feels like it feels like the potato people have got me over a barrel. You know, I mean, they could hike the prices up. I still have to buy the potatoes. I got nothing else. I got have that. You know, you got your fancy pastas for the uh, for the upper classes, but for the working classes, it's chips or uh, or mash, isn't it? Really? Yeah, no, I wouldn't worry. I don't think people who do potatoes are going to go on strike. I don't think so. Because we just go and pick them ourselves, don't we? Or grow them ourselves. Sure. Sure. Is, is it, what would be the most pointless strike? What would be the strike that we went so? Do you know what I mean? I'll tell you what, I'll tell you one strike that would, would go so. Um, those guys who do sketches in Covent Garden. <laughs> yeah! Yeah, take your picture, or they, they, they do a caricature of you. The strike, yeah. imagine the strike! You go out and you go, well I want one with a big nose and a big yeah. chin. I want an amusing caricature of me and my sister. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh dear. But I need, I, can't, I need a sketch, I need a pencil drawing of Leonardo DiCaprio. Looking like a monkey. <laughs> I mean, how are we gonna get this? This is unbelievable. Yeah, I'll so, tell uh, you. I'll tell you also the strikes that have no effect. Right. Those um, people in um, in nightclub toilets, who just you know, kind of there. They got the uh, the Lynx deodorant oh, spray. Quite controversial at the moment with the the Tweedy case. <laughs> oh, the Cheryl Tweedy case. Do you know what I mean? Sure. I got so, some thoughts on that actually. Like what? Well, maybe we play a record. I'll share my thoughts on. Well, thought on um, Tweedster coming up. Um, some Steve Merchant thoughts on the Cheryl uh, Tweedy case. Looks like one of four point nine. Some REM. Right? I think, yeah, what's yeah, the yeah, frequency, yeah, Kenneth? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, what's the frequency, Kenneth? Kenneth, I'm telling you, it's 104.9 XFM. I'm Richard Gervais oh. with me, Steve Merchant, and Carl Pilkington. Carl the user Pilkington. <laughs> Just takes, takes, takes. Takes, takes, takes. Destroyed a man. Go <laughs> <laughs> to you, Steve. <laughs> you should talk like that more. It's cool and sexy. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I make it clear now, I do not condone in any way, shape or form what Cheryl Tweedy did. But I have to say, they wind me up. By they, you mean... Toilet attendants. Yes, no. yes, 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 yes. Right, yeah. Not, not, um, uh, pop idol winners. That's what I thought you meant, yeah. yeah. So, um, go on. But, because I'll tell you what it is, you go into a club <laughs> or, uh, pubs or big trendy pubs, you go yeah. in there and there's the toilet attendant in there, he's got his little display of, um, you know, aftershaves, sprays, yeah. some sweets maybe, Blue straws, whatever it might be. Yeah, maybe, maybe a lollipop. Maybe a lollipop. And, Alright, I don't know if they're in, I assume they're not employed by the club. I'm assuming the club's got, they, they got, we've got the DJ, we've got the bar staff, wait a minute, we need a guy do to they, irritate do, the When the manager walks in, do they hide? Well, this is it, I don't know if it's a guy who's just like- <laughs> Is it like basking? Yeah, he's they snuck they in. Like, yeah, okay. He came in when it was free during happy hour, <laughs> he's got a little bag, a carrier bag, yeah. he's snuck in the, in the toilet. But the uh, thing is, it's the fact that, uh, toilet attendants, fair enough, I mean, it, I'm happy if a toilet attendant sneaks in under cover of darkness, cleans it for me, and then shoots off, but it's when I have to see them there. I, I feel know. guilty because I'm like, I've got a, it's like, I maybe wash my hands, I'll forget he's there, he'll hand me a paper towel, 
Suddenly I got a tip in, like but a quid anno or something. It annoys me because they're there, I wash my hands at all. I don't usually wash my hands. I, 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 I sometimes don't even bother getting my knob out. Oh. I do it where I stand and change my trousers when I get home. <laughs> exactly. So it annoys me after to go through this charade of getting it out, slashing <laughs> out of it, shaking it dry, and then washing my hands. See, if he did any of those elements, what, I'd give him a quid, yeah. Pop it out, pop it out. But yeah. not to hand me a paper towel and get it myself. And I, I know. Just, it's just guilt, and I, sometimes I'll hold it in. Because I'm doing so I don't want to go back in what there. What annoys me is like a posh award ceremony, it's a pound a piss. It is a pound a piss. Do you know what I mean? So, I, you know, I Or in a like... top hotel or something. Yeah. It's absurd. And I, t I tell you what's worse than that, I know that he's doing it because he's got to feed his kids, but it's the fact that I've got to look him in the eye. You know, yeah. it's like he's humanised, you know? If he was only dehumanised, Rick. <laughs> yeah. If, he were, if I could see him and I didn't think he was a human being, I wouldn't feel guilty. I if know. he could sort of hide under the, under the, the urinal, perhaps, yeah. or and he just put a hand out, sink. like thing from the Adam's right? just, he just put, puts out, he you just know. just pop a hand out, doesn't say anything, with just hands me the paper so you don't even see, like, you know, hand out, and then I go, I put a pound in, I take the thing, put a pound in, nick a lollipop and run away. <laughs> no <laughs> aggro. Exactly, it's the fact I gotta see them and I feel guilty because, you know, <laughs> I'm on the radio, I've got a cushy life, I know. here's a guy who's just trying to make ends meet. It makes me feel bad, it ruins me evening. Yeah. I'm just pleading for them, can they not do it anymore? Can they maybe get a, <laughs> can they get a job, illegal mini cabin or something? <laughs> Please! <laughs> Born again, Star Sailor on XFM 104.9. We're back. It's the 1st of November. Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington. It's the same old email address if people want to get in touch. Ricky.Gervais at XFM.co.uk. We've had a couple of emails, Rick. Someone, Go actually on. Ian, he's emailed in. He said that because of the blinking post postman, yeah. it's his wife's birthday today. She's had no cards or oh. presents because, uh, presumably because she's got no friends, but also because of the the postal strike. But you won't be able to use that excuse for Suzanne's birthday again because she knows that the postal strike won't be on. Around that time. <laughs> Alright, Carl. So but anyway, so would you just say happy birthday to Tracy? Have those condoms run out yet that you got for Christmas? I Carl. Still got them. Have you? Hmm. Um. <laughs> just say happy birthday to Tracy. It'll make, happy birthday, it'll make Tracy. Happy. And hello to Aidan, who's uh, thrown in to let us know he's actually listening in Northern Ireland. Oh, so we're, 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 we've gone international. Sure. Now there's uh, also a question here. A questionnaire has been sent in by, uh, Ruth Chamberlain at Cord Wainers College. Cord Wainers College? <laughs> Seems a weird. Cordwainers? It used to, yeah. It's, it's either used to be a poly or a laundrette. <laughs> I, I think it's, too. yeah. Anyway, it's, uh, it's something that she's doing for, um, she's studying product design for the fashion industry. And anyway, she's got, um, some questionnaire. And we're obviously, we're too busy and important to fill out the questionnaire. But we thought maybe you could answer it, Carl. Look, about... Carl, look, he's yawning, he's looking round. He's only got to do two hours and he gets a whole day off and he's getting paid for it. Do something, Carl. Be grateful. You've probably, you've probably ruined a man's career. He's been ridiculed now. For doing this, that, that he's so weak, where he should have slapped, squ squoze your head and kicked you out of the building. So, let's have a little bit of effort. You've only got an hour and a quarter to do, then you get two days off, alright? Alright. Right, Carl, it's a questionnaire about happiness. Oh, yeah. There's one person- <laughs> <laughs> Well, that should answer it right there. The <clears throat> first question, Carl, on a happy scale of one to ten, where are you on the happy scale? Uh, Is it uh, at this moment, or in general? Well, I would say generally. Okay. Yeah, but you don't always have to like. Oh, I mean, I, I, I think I'm happy in that, but I don't always show it. You never show it. No, but it doesn't mean I'm not. I'm not happy in that. Like, I, I'm all right at the moment. I'd say I'm probably on a. It's probably on a, about an eight. I was. A, I was probably on about a nine when I woke up, right? <laughs> and then, uh, sort of fell out with Suzanne over a haircut. Yeah. Right. She went for a haircut and came back with something that I didn't like. <laughs> Sorry, what did you say? You so so when your girlfriend walked to the door, she had her hair done. You said I don't like it. All right? Do you well, say she that? could tell by the look on my face. It, I, and but I the, said, but don't you say no? I'm I'm happy with it. I just just can't tell. I'm loving it because I'm, then she might have it done again. Oh, you Carl, I just cannot get over you. I really can't. I no, but cannot... you, you haven't seen it. Right? St so so then I was fed up. But what, then I thought, sorry, what authority have you got uh, to talk about haircuts? Yeah, you had that. You had the uh, well, officially from a, a barber in Manchester above a railway station in a shack. It was two pounds a cut. Told you you had the hair of a Chinaman. Well, you <laughs> wish you had the hair of a Chinaman now. You got nowhere. <laughs> You're a little bald man with your mouth open. So don't. Is she listening to this, Suzanne? Sitting at home with a woolly hat on. <laughs> I don't know. But she knows now, doesn't she? What did you say? What, what did she did do you say? about it? I though? just said you look like someone out of Slade. <laughs> Interestingly, oh, that's what I look for in a girlfriend. Oh, God! Which one oh. is Slade? 
Well, that one with the not, funny, uh... Not Dave Hill. Yeah. The one with the crooked fringe and the goofy... She has her teeth done as well, did she? She had two <laughs> front teeth put in. Dumper. So anyway, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm... So, so prior to that you're on a nine, then you saw the haircut, you're on an eight. Yeah. Yeah. And now then, what you uh, on? I'm probably on about a six at the moment. Why? What's happened? Well, while well, Star Sailor was on, a bit more head squeezing going on. <laughs> so, yeah, about a five or six. So, generally speaking, <laughs> what would you say you are about on a four? You're on a four. <laughs> four, 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 four. <laughs> All right. Uh, what would you give someone who wasn't very happy? What would you give them? Uh, what are you thinking, Carl? Depends why they're not happy. They're not. They're low. Okay. So, what would you give them? I mean, if you, if, yeah, depends, isn't it? If it's someone who's just lost their arms and legs in an accident, you don't give them a lollipop. Sure. Or some mittens. Yeah. <laughs> you give them a hat. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, 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 dare I say it, a smile. <laughs> a skateboard. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I you don't know. know. You gotta answer the question. Alright, so hang on, Let, let's assume that you've upset your girlfriend because you slagged off her haircut. What right? are you doing you now to make her happy? How are you gonna cheer her up? Uh, and not buy her a baseball cap? I don't know yet. I haven't thought about it because I've got this to sort out, haven't I? <laughs> so, w w when I get home, get her some gel or something. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God! <laughs> oh, Christ. Okay, oh. and, uh, oh. Alright, just name something that always puts a smile on your face, kind of. It always cheers you up. If you're feeling a bit blue, it always cheers you up. A monkey, innit? Learning something. Right. <laughs> That's a bit weird. <laughs> I love the qualifier. <laughs> That's no, I think a bit it was weird. Too, I do. I think it was two different seven sentences. I think <laughs> it was learning something. That's a bit weird. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, learning something that's a bit weird. Okay, and finally, um, if you could have something to make you happy, what would it be? Little chimp, wouldn't it? Little chimp in a suit. Well, don't answer for it. Don't put words into it. Uh, you can have anything you want. It'll cheer you up and make you happy. What would it be? You can't say a, a skin of titanium. It's got to be something possible. Yeah. X-ray vision. No. What What would you have? It can be. It can be conceptual. It could be world peace. It doesn't have to be, you know, a, a new watch. Yeah, like someone else wish for that. Sure. It'd be a waste. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah uh, why should you do it? And then uh, someone else gets a nice new watch and there's world peace. <laughs> exactly. You're walking round. It's nice and peaceful. You know what time it is. He's swanning round. He's got a lovely new watch and there's no threat of him being bombed. <laughs> exactly. I'm, I'm quite happy the way I am. Really, I don't. I don't really want. Are you much. really? But you're on a four. Yeah, yeah, you're on a happy yeah, scale yeah, of four. Yeah, you're on a four. Surely you want to get to ten. Surely the point of life is to be on ten. Yeah, but what's what's a ten? Do you know what I mean? No. What's what's a ten? Contentment, absolute contentment, Bliss. joy in your heart, yeah. inwardly and outwardly. Not walking around with a little round man head with your mouth open, going, "What's the point of that? I've done it once." <laughs> <laughs> Is that why you've still got all the condoms? Because you've done it once. Mm. <laughs> What's the point of that? <laughs> <laughs> Alright, we're gonna get over the uh, some air gel. Come on! Ten. Just one thing that would make you happy. That would cheer you up if you were feeling low. Tuesday's off as well? <laughs> I'll have the MD just, uh, you know, resign straight away, shall I? I honestly don't know what would make me happy just like that. Cause I, cause I am happy. I know you, I know you say I'm fed up and that. Do you know well, what, do you know what, it's it, 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 it wouldn't want to be too rich. He said, because if I was too rich, then Suzanne would say, let's go around the world. He said he wants to be rich enough, so they're happy in that, they got their bathroom and everything, but they can't, they still can't afford any more holidays a year. Mm. Think of that, think of that wish. Think of that capping your wishes. <laughs> yeah. Do you know what I mean? Putting a ceiling yeah, yeah, on, yeah. on your ambition. I love it. <laughs> it's genius. Look at his face. Play a record. You an It's idiot. like if you'd won that ticket round <laughs> Charlie's Chocolate Factory. <laughs> <laughs> and he'd said, actually, Carl, I want you to take over the factory. It was a test. You'd have said, I just wanted to look around the chocolate factory. Yeah. I'm and happy to go back it, and it, live. No, no, he'd have said, he said, I'll, have, I'll work it, but I'm not working Monday. <laughs> exactly. Play a record. Why'd you give me a chocolate factory to a kid? I know. Idiot. Give it to the fat one at least. He yeah. enjoyed it more. That's the price I buy for loving you the way that I do. Beautiful. Billy Bragg from his, uh, Essential Billy Bragg compilation. Now, I know a lot of people are thinking Billy Bragg, or oh, I can't be bothered, politics, and I have to say, buy this CD, 
skip past every song that is, for instance, um, there is power in a union. <laughs> Don't be duped by fascism. Yeah, it's your, uh, it's your, uh, right and duty to vote. Yeah. Right wing, wrong wing. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Ignore all that. But just listen, love, just listen to the love, love songs. His love songs are beautiful. Yeah. Uh, it, it's fan fantastic. Nearing tonight I celebrate my love for you with a pint of beer and a new tattoo. Uh, it's yeah, great. Brilliant. Yeah, look, lose the ones about, yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Stri striking. Yeah, yeah, exactly, cause we know what we think of that. So, um, yeah, I heartily recommend that. Um, and, uh, what Carl, we're on happiness. Carl. Yeah. I'll, I'll try and explain to Carl that the aim to, you know, is really to get on a ten. Yeah. Well, I like the he's fact that he four. started on a nine. But I love the fact he's happy with four. Yeah. Uh, I love that. No, but what what I mean is, right, I'm not looking for like happiness. Right. I'm You're all right. You're not looking for happiness. What? <laughs> What's that for? What I mean is, right, I'm happy when I'm not fed up. So what I mean is, I'm happy. Is this the is this your, in your new book, Psychology <laughs> of the Mind? What what is that? I'm happy when I'm not fed up. <laughs> That's like an eight-year-old tr trying to explain happiness. Johnny, what is it when I'm happy when I'm not fed up, miss? Well done. Good boy. That's it. You're happy when you're not fed up. Talk like an adult. Yeah, but that's what I'm saying to you, though. I don't- What? I- I'm happy most of the time. It's just that when things niggle me, I find that- m I realise when I'm annoyed more than when I'm happy. But Carl, you, every time we talk to you, you are whinging about something. You've got yeah. something that annoys you. But he's you. one of those people that if he whinges loud enough, he gets away with it. Like he's in it. I think he goes, oh, I'm really busy. I, went, I come in and he's doing nothing. He's chatting because he's having big long chats with everyone about how someone's wound him up. Yeah. And they all come in and they go, oh, Carl's fed up. Because he's got this show. You know what I mean? He's wormed his no, way. No, hang on a minute. Go you on. came in. You came in moaning about the post and that today. Yeah. Well, everyone's annoyed and frustrated by that. There's small businesses going out I'm of not, business. I'm not, you haven't heard me. No, you're not, right. because who's sending you letters? No one. Mm, You've got no friends. No. You've said that yourself. Yeah. You've openly declared you don't want friends. They're too much hassle. Yeah. 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 But, uh, that, um, yeah. That is, that is my job. Friends is the, it, that is the point of life to me. It's, I can't wait to see them. I squeeze their head, I welcome them in. Uh, they annoy <laughs> they friends are annoying. Me. I love it. Friends are annoying. He's even scared of like, uh, doing some uh, uh, with a friend or uh, uh, getting a gift because he goes after buying one back now. Yeah, it's sort of like life's a bit of a chore for Carl, isn't it? Well, anyway, all right, let's leave that aside. Obviously, you're never going to be entirely happy, although apparently you are already on the brink of happiness. All you have well, to I say is you know, your right? hair look nice. That's all you have to say. Yeah, it's good. Yeah, and that's it. End of story. What's the point in that? What is the point? Because she that? doesn't. Re she doesn't really care what you think, but she doesn't want to hear. That she looks like Dave Hill from Slade. She's not having her haircut just to please you, Carl. Despite what you might think. <laughs> yeah. He's taken aback by that. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sorry, happiness then, yeah. All right, so, well, listen, I, I was happy the other week, right, when I was going up to Manchester on the train, mm. nice quiet carriage, I'm sat there reading about sharks and that, right? <laughs> nice, yeah. nice and quiet. And I got annoyed, I texted you, didn't I? Yeah. When, uh, two fellas got on. Um, can we talk about it? Well, yeah, you, you, I mean, you've, you, you've started it. Two gay men got on. Go on. Two gay fellas got on. Yeah. And it wasn't the fact they were gay that bothered me. It no. was like, you know, each to their own. Let sure. them get, you know what I mean? Let yeah. them do what they do. Yeah. And, um, Behind closed doors. But they started talking really loud. Huh? Right. And they were going on about, uh... That's annoying what? anyway. That's annoying whether you're straight or gay. Yeah, 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 yeah. talking to But do you know what theory I have about <laughs> they go out late? <laughs> yeah. Gay people always go out late. Yeah. Yeah. Right. When we're- yeah, I mean, what- what- what time do you go out in the evening? Uh, 7.30. If you go out about 7.30, yeah. if you- yeah. you know, if I'm out of work, I might- I might go out about 8 o'clock or something. Yeah. Mm. I can guarantee I'll sort of be in bed by about half 12. Sure. At that time, they're still sort of ironing the jeans. <laughs> right? And- and the funny thing was- <laughs> I, I've Ironing their jeans! I've always said this, right? <laughs> and, and you, sort, you sort of said that's rubbish. I'm sat on the train reading about sharks, these two are talking, and they're going, oh, we can't wait to get there. And his phone goes, and he goes, uh, hello. And, uh, on the end, he goes, anyway, I'll, I'll see you at one then. Right? Right. So I thought, well, maybe that's tomorrow. Yeah. Could be one in the afternoon. That's when most people would meet. Yeah. And then he carried that's on talking. That's when most people would meet. Carried on talking, and he goes, yeah. So anyway, like I say, see you tonight. One o'clock is meeting someone. <laughs> yeah. Don't, I don't, I don't know You're why he's out that late. Do you remember when his favourite record of all time is The Killing of Georgie? Sure. He said, would he have been killed if he'd have been <laughs> back at a decent time? <laughs> uh, there's no mention point. of the time sure. in this song. And then the funny, the funny bit was actually, that did make me laugh, right? Uh, when he'd finished talking on the phone, he said to his partner, right, 
uh, oh, there you go, let's have a little chat. And the fella said, who was that? And he said, oh, it's, it's Dave. He said, which one's Dave? He said, you know, the one with the shaved head. I thought, in the gay community, yeah. that isn't a good description. No. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I know. So uh, I've yeah, well, got little shaved heads. Before we move on, was the Sharks article interesting? Did you learn anything? It was pretty good. Was it? Go yeah, on, I'll teach it? you something about that later. Oh, okay. Uh, is, this, is this educating Ricky? Uh, it wasn't, but I can, I can t teach you a bit. Yeah. Alright. That's good. Play some ads on that. Play some ads on a tune, yeah. and then have we got maybe a competition? Yeah. All what right. have we got? We're all looking forward to that. Alright. <laughs> Excellent. Welcome to the Prime Stand Up for Transfer. Welcome to the Prime Stand Up for Transfer. Fortune Faded. Red Hot Chili Peppers and XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais, with me Stephen Merchant and Carl Pilkington. Back for two hours of the evening and Monday half. Carning the management, baby, and sending this station spiralling down into the depths <laughs> for his greed <laughs> and selfishness. Yes. Okay. Uh, we were talking earlier about things that have happened when we were away. Um, quite a lot. Quite a lot, but there's one thing I heard. It might be a rumour. I hope it's a rumour. I kept it from you, Steve, because I, I didn't- I want you to- so sort of have spirits out because we've been at it in the office and we've got to be. Okay, um. Okay, I'm just gonna say it. Um. I, I think Shed 7 have split up. Sorry, I didn't. Shed 7 have split up. Uh. <coughs> I, sorry, I think I got something in my eye. <laughs> uh, it's just a bit dusty, you know, I think. So, okay, if it's true, it's true. If not, we've got the, At least we've got their music. The music, the music, the music lives on. So we're going to dedicate this show, Head Seven, and all the bands they influence. influence. So we're just going to play just every 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 artist that that formed a band after they'd heard Shed Seven. Just play them from now on, and obviously the hits, all the hits, oh, the I, Shed Seven hits. When I saw this, I saw it on a website. It said about, is it true? Shed Seven was split up. And the next, you know, one of those got a dorky message boards. Someone came on and said, "You are joking." <laughs> 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 oh. oh dear, what else is that? I just way? pray that uh, uh, it is just a rumour. It, it is a rumour, yeah. Then oh, it's, it's, just, just to call in if it's true. Um, maybe well, no, call in, call in yourself. It, it, well, Shed, if Shed's listening, yeah. and he's, he's not busy, he's got Mondays off now, uh, uh, call in and say, what, what was the split all about? <laughs> Tell you what I uh, read about. I'm Sharks, right. monkeys, or jellyfish? Uh, it's, it's ten past, isn't it? We haven't, uh, we haven't done a, a little bit of knob news. <laughs> no, right. we haven't had no news, no. But, um, it's been three months. It's been, it's been three months coming. There's this, there's this thing, uh, I don't know the full story, I don't know how it happened, right, but little, little Russian, uh, little Russian fella. Yeah. Uh, he was, uh, sort of having, uh, sort of emptying his bladder, right, and yeah. somehow electrocuted himself. Right. right. And, uh, sort of did a bit of damage. How did he, what, is he stashed I, I don't on know, some live wires or something? Something like that. So did anyway. it damage to himself or to an electric fire or something? No, to himself. To himself. Yeah. And, um, so the doctor- Didn't, didn't slip and t t curling tongs went up his ass when he was pissed <laughs> because that, that's happened a lot in yeah, we've hospitals. All been we've all, we've all, we've all shoved the old curling tongs up the ass <laughs> when having a piss. Right. So, um, I can't even be bothered. No, 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 no we're interested, we're interested. What the fuck, we're interested. Don't you can't right? be bothered, you get Mondays off, do some work. Right, so anyway, so the doctor says, oh, not looking good, we'll have to take that off. Mm. What? He's like, oh. a, a novectomy? Yeah. <laughs> really? But the funny thing is, right? Nothing funny about that. They've done, uh You're doing me head in. You're doing Just tell the story! Just doing me head in. Oh, oh you can chill out I've on only Monday. Got, I've only got 15 minutes, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna talk to you every Saturday, I'm gonna get the money's worth out of this, cause you get Mondays off. And I can't, I can't bear the fact someone's getting away with something like that, cause it's terrible. So you're gonna stick this out, or you're gonna have to work Mondays. So take it on the chin. Right, okay. Just finish the story. Yes. I command you. Just do it. Anyway, so they've, they said, he said, you know, you, will you be able to sort me a little knob out? A prosthetic right? knob. Yeah. yeah. But, they put him out, for yeah. the operation. Yeah. He woke up. Yeah. Right, and he's thinking, oh, thank God that's over and done with. Yeah. <laughs> they've only grown it on his arm. What are you talking about? <laughs> you twat. Shut the f- d d d you an idiot. What do you mean they've grown it on his arm? Apparently, like, that's, that's, the way they do it. Oh, then yeah, but to, to then put it on, that, that, that wasn't a mistake. It wasn't a doctor going, did it go there? <laughs> Some bloke didn't, I didn't do a degree. Are you a real doctor? <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah but why, why put it there? Because it's got a graph, because it's got a grow, it's got a graph there, it's where they can control it. To skin, the skin tissue. But on your arm. Well, 
but they're going to remove it or... from the arm. It's, what do you mean on the back? On your back. Somewhere, well, well, we can't wear a T-shirt. Yeah, but you could, you could have a quick... He's in hospital! It, 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 this way he can still have a little tug, no, can't no, he? But they'll leave it there for quite a bit. It's not... Do you know what I mean? It's not going to be like, oh, it's just there for a few days. Yeah. It's there for a bit. That's not good, is it? So he's got a cock on his arm? Yeah, what's up with that? What do you mean, what's up with that? Well, I mean, it, it's, you could say it's a, it's, a, it's a thumb or something, couldn't he? <laughs> yeah. But they, they, they remove be, it. Be good for hitching. It down it, below if, if, you had, if you had a knob instead of a thumb and you went hitchhiking, just tickle it. And they can see it like a mile down the road, couldn't they? They'll <laughs> Post him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If I'd lost my knob, I'd go, oh, I'm not gonna have all that stuff. Just, just whack a pair of tips on me. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I mean? I'd think, oh, I'll have a, just forget it. But, but why not just put it where it should be straight away instead of messing about? Where should it be straight away? <laughs> you know. On the you forehead. <laughs> Listen, let's, are we doing a competition? <laughs> let's play a tune. Let's, let's, let's come just, on, let's just... Carl, you can't be bothered. Right, oh, okay, we're gonna rainbow, strut rainbow, this yeah? and you're gonna work Mondays again. <laughs> Since You've Been Gone by Rainbow on XFM 104.9. Well, it's what uh, the, the, uh, Londoners have been waiting for. It's Rockbusters, isn't it, Carl? Well, oh. it's, it's not, it's not Rockbusters, it's... It's something we've done. It's a bit like Rockbusters, but it's been tweaked. <laughs> right? Brilliant. So remember that it's done with sound effects and that. Oh God! Oh. Really? What do you mean? All right, come on. Right, remember this one. We we tried it before. Oh, wait a minute. We headphones on. Oh, wait a minute. And minute, this is minute. one you've done in the past. This is we've not the competition. This is not the competition. But I said, like, what what song is this? <laughs> yeah. Smack my bitch up, yeah. yeah. Brilliant. <laughs> Brilliant. Smack my bitch up. Yeah. 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 Right. So it's kind of that, but but rather than just doing songs, it's that film or song sounds good. You know when you do these things, you can't do them in the week. You've got to do them either Saturdays or Mondays. Yeah, I do. Yeah. So, well, well, I'm going to check well, on that because well, that really annoys me. Because it's, it's been done, so it doesn't really. You don't have to worry about it when, it's, no, when but, it gets done. That do you? Because it's done. So. Well, yeah, but I don't. You're taking time out of things you should do. Be doing at work. You're yeah, already yeah. weaseling way out. XFM's going down the tube, mm. and you're taking the piss left, right, and centre. Mm. Right. So so. Is is this week's little grab that film or song sounds good? So what is it? Come here. <laughs> ah, I'm well happy now I've had that. <laughs> <laughs> what? Huh? what? It's a that? film or a song title, is it? No, it's it's a film or a song. What do you Forget mean? that. It's a film. <laughs> 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 what are you talking about? <laughs> that must have taken you three minutes. I hope you didn't do it on a Tuesday, though, because that's cut into precious time. <laughs> have you seen how long a trial takes him? About 30 minutes. And he Sorry, do uh, one let a week. Just, let's just concentrate for a second. Okay. Right. It's the film, This is, is a film title. The title of a film. Yeah. Play it again. Come here. <laughs> <laughs> ah, I'm well happy now I've had that. <clears throat> right. Oh, dearie me. Dearie me. Three, Three months they've waited for that. Three months for that. <laughs> Shite. Do you want to say what the prices are? Oh, I can do. I'd say there's good news and there's bad. I don't know, I think maybe this is what people think of Carl's quizzes. This is the respect they show us. Because you know that, um, the various companies, they'll send you product which you can include in competitions. It's a yeah. promotional tool. Yeah. They've sent us, um, I'm Alan Partridge, Series 2. Yeah. And Forty Towers, the complete series. Brilliant. On VHS. I mean, who's got a video player anymore, Carl? It's for losers and the working classes. Yeah, for up north. They still sell them up north, I think. Thankfully. In, mar in market stores. <laughs> it's been redeemed. It's, I mean, I, I wonder how, old, how we got hold of that. Yeah. Yeah, the Office series do on DVD. That was that was a nightmare, getting hold of that one. The best um, album in the world ever, it's got stuff on there. Super Furry Animals is on there, Supergrass, Gold Frap. And uh, also the best of the Boomtown Rats, which is not bad, and um, a couple of teachers' DVDs. So some good stuff there amongst the uh, the VHSs. And you can win all of those treats by identifying this film. Oh God! Come here. <laughs> ah, I'm well happy now I've had that. <clears throat> <laughs> Email only. We don't want to actually speak to you. <laughs> Ricky Gervais at xfm.co.uk. I'm sorry if that's brought you down. It's made um, us feel Can nice. I just say something? What's the phone number, Carl? 
Uh, 08700 800 1234. 08700 Call up for no reason, because I want Carl to answer the phone, he hates doing it. So call up and talk to Carl. Ask him anything you want, just talk to him. Okay? Right, answer the phone, they're going mad. <laughs> Big Sir on XFM 104.9. He's so annoyed that he had to answer all those calls. <laughs> Why did you like it? I just. We're wasting time, aren't we? <laughs> that's your listenership. No, no, they no. want to speak to you. No, that's nice and everything that people call up. Yeah. But we should be concentrating on what we're doing. Yeah, well, I'm do, but I do this show to annoy you. I don't do it for the money or the kudos or the awards. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? I do it so you have to be here and do what I say for two hours. Because you're getting away with murder here in the week. I don't like seeing that. I don't like injustice in the world. I try and fight it wherever I can. <laughs> so, I do it to <laughs> annoy- It's good of you, Rick. Thanks yeah. for doing that, mate. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> it's interesting, it though, that you- you- it's pa you're passionate about fighting injustice, but you focus <laughs> specifically on Carl at XFM. <laughs> One yeah. of the world's lesser crimes. <laughs> Being a little yeah. bald mank twat. Exactly. I know, yeah, but it, nonetheless, it is a crime. Look at him, look, he's got his head down like one of those, you know one of those chimps that have like lost their mate in London Zoo? <laughs> he just sits there like, you know, a, a broken animal. Carl, what are you thinking? Where are you on the happiness scale now of one to ten? Carl. On about a three. <laughs> Go on, Steve, what are you gonna do? Well, we were talking earlier about stuff that happens while happened? we've been away. Um, we, we, um, shed, shed, we don't talk about I haven't been this upset shell. since, uh, yeah. Skunk and Nancy broke um, up. Yeah, I know. Cheryl Tweedy. Um, we've done that, we've done the tweeter. Um, well, of course, the war. Is that all I've done and dusted now? I think now? it's pretty much over. I think we've, um, we've sorted that out. Okay, good. What annoys me is people going out, going at Tony Blair and Bush right for like bomb, you know, bombing stuff and all that. But my point is this, right? Those bombs have all been bought and paid for. Yeah. You, and the they're, taxpayer, of, they're, uh, yeah, yours. They're and I'm, and I'm not for. a scientist, but I think bombs go off. <laughs> I think so. And if you don't, use them, you lose them. <laughs> so let's use them. Exactly. Do you know what I mean? It's, it's like, like tinned food. It lasts like, for like, a yeah, while, but eventually yeah. it's going to go off. Like, it's like anything, oh, we better eat that. Don't, 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 no, don't do the fresh stuff. Don't build the fresh ones. Let's use the old ones. Exactly. So, Because they're know, just stockpiling there and they cost we, us millions. I know, we want to see if they work as well. What? Oh, do, no, we've never tried that one. Use them. <laughs> use them on just, out. you know. Oh, exactly. Carl, who would you bomb if you could? Uh, I wouldn't. No? What do you mean? Or what, imagine you could bomb a country, you're not actually gonna bomb them, but you're just gonna frighten them, just gonna put the frighteners on frighten them. Frighten them, yeah. You're just gonna go, I'm gonna bomb you and then I'll And they'll go running, uh, yeah. and under, under tin shelters and that. Yeah. Rick, Ricky's house? No, come on, what country, no, what country? No, I, I wouldn't, I'd, honestly, no one sort of makes me fed up or anything. No one makes you fed up? I'm not not enough that I want to bomb a place. Well, you're not actually gonna bomb them, you're I just putting involved, the frighteners so on. I will not get just say, let someone else do it. Sure. <laughs> What about you, Rick? <laughs> I got a list here. Yeah. <laughs> um, Do you know who I'd, uh, who I'd threaten? Go on. The Swiss. Oh, they've had it easy. They've always they? had it easy. They've always they've, chicken they've, they, It's that equivalent of having Mondays off. Exactly. Like, oh, we don't want to fight. Exactly. You, can, you can both walk through it. You know what I mean? Yeah. We're a carpet. Exactly. Well, yeah. we're busy sorting out fascism. Yeah. You know, or Osama bin Laden. They're, they're just in, chilling out. They're old in ours and Hitler's coat. <laughs> exactly. Do you know exactly. what I mean? <laughs> Little weed. Yeah. We both turned on them. Yeah. And I'll tell you who else. This will just frighten them up. Just what? shake up a bit. Um, Iceland. They've had it easy. Because they have stayed out of everything. They have not been involved in anything, as far as I can tell. But you don't have to bomb them, do Eskimos, you? Eskimos, they've, they've never been involved in anything. I know, but don't bomb them, just pour hot water on their <laughs> exactly. Just send a plane over with warm yeah. water. Yeah. <laughs> with a big flask. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, just to shake things up a bit, just to I keep know, them on yeah. their toes, that's all it is. Why would you live there? If you could choose, I have If no you're an Eskimo and you're born, and you're a little baby, you grow up and you go, what? I'm, I'm, sorry? I'm eating ice and fish for yeah. the rest of my life. Well, fair You're enough. having a laugh. Fair enough, like years and years ago. But now, presumably, they they're off, they're aware of the proper house and the, the fact you can live in, say, Somerset or the south of France. I know, but it's like, haven't they learned? It's sort of like, well, they haven't even got. They're not even on as good a thing as the North American Indians. Now they're sort of pissed up. They got smoking fags. They live in lovely little cages. Up. They, they're all brought to their little village. They're having a whale of a time. They don't have to go hunting anymore and yeah. like killing buffalo. And exactly. the same with the es Eskimos. Let's get them some beer and fags down there. Knock the igloos down. Build them some lovely little. Well, 
semis or like or um, just a little kind of trailer or a caravanette or something like that. It's <laughs> yeah. gotta be better. It's gotta be preferable. <laughs> I know. Some of them have got TVs built in, Rick. I know. What what showers? Watch? Yeah, they've got cable and stuff, have they? Yeah. Or was there they? one sort of Icelandic well, you channel? Get satellite or whatever, wouldn't you? Magnus Magnuson. Yeah, exactly. Probably doing there's loads of mastermind reruns. Yeah. And, <laughs> and Pingu. <laughs> Just on a yeah. loop. That's porn over there. Yeah, though. exactly. Oh, brilliant. No, well, that's, oh. Like, that's like a hardcore documentary. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, this is uh, Racist FM 104.9. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, who would you like to see bombed? Or not bombed. <laughs> <laughs> not bombed, but just put the fighters on yeah, them. It would Email Ricky Dr. Vase, the XFL. Of anyone, okay. yeah. Any nation or anything. Carl, thoughts? My song? You're, you're not working for your money. You're not having Monday off. We've got to do some at Monday. Let's plan some at Monday. Just to get him in here. You've got a, two hours for eight hours off. You don't do an eight hour day anyway. Rick, how but much is he getting paid? He's, get, uh, he's getting money for this. It's, it's, I think his wages went up last time. So he's getting paid to be here, extracurricular, extra work, right? So it's moonlighting, and they're giving him a day off. Yeah. And he's contributing nothing. Nothing. So. Huh? What, Carl? Did you say something, mate? So. Huh? Going on. What? Going on with yourself. Well, say something back and earn your money. Well, let's, let's play a song. We've done a bit. Done a bit of stuff there. You idiot. Don't say we, mate. I've not heard anything from you. We've heard your contribution. Yeah. P.I.M.P. 50 Cent on XFM 104.9. Me, Ricky Gervais. Uh, you, Stephen Merchant, and you, Carl Pilkington. All right? What are we doing then? How are we going? Carl, how are you feeding? Uh, what, uh, on, on a scale of ten now, happiness scale? About, uh, just building back up again a bit. Yeah? Why? Probably what? on about five. Oh, that's not well, bad. What, what changed it? What changed it? Just calm down a bit. Sure. Yeah. Oh. The chill out vibes of PIMP probably helped you. Yeah. I think we should just say, um, give massive props to, uh, Adam and Joe, who stood in for oh, us. Oh yeah, stood in for us. Uh, did a great uh, job. Yeah, great, really good. In but, fact, interesting, are, you, are, own, are they gonna get their own show here? I think they should. Yeah, they'll probably get something. Well, there you go. Well, um, it's interesting, because I was listening to them, they, they had quite a nice selection of features, they had a couple of good competitions and things. Now, I don't know if, um, having done them for XFM, is it somehow, they may be kind of under some kind of XFM copyright? Which would mean, as we've got no ideas, maybe we could just hijack just some, of some of theirs. Maybe you could look into that. Obviously uh, not Monday, you're not here, but... I was with Joe Cornish last night, went to oh, a little, yeah. um, do, uh, uh, um, Jonathan's house and Joe was there and he walked in and I was taken aback by how tall he is. Sure. Because I've, I, I'd forgotten and he's about 6'4", but he's unlikely to, do you know what I mean by mm. that? It's sort yeah. of like some people surprise you. And, um, he was going, you know, he said, I don't consider, um, 6'4", you know, big. I said, well, it is pretty big. I said, but I know what you mean, I walk around with Steve Merchant. Yeah. And, uh, he went, how tall Steve? And I was six, six, six foot seven. Yep. And Joe went, oh, that's, that's, a, that's nearly a disability, isn't it? Do you know, he's absolutely right as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, do you know, yeah. I genuinely, since school, I <laughs> used to go to school with a little disabled fella. Lovely guy. No, I swear to God, lovely guy. And, do you, I remember he came in when we got in the sixth form, and he, he basically got, I don't know what the ins and outs of it were, but as far as I could tell, he'd got a car for free. A specially converted it, car. Yeah. You know, because he was disabled. And yeah. uh, he was Same as Carl, around. same as Carl. Me, me, me. I need this, I need that. But it seemed to me that I was thinking, well, why can I not get something similar? Because there are some cars I can't fit in. Because I'm too tall. I genuinely cannot drive the smaller cars, the cheaper cars. I've got, I'm obliged to buy a more expensive, larger car. Because I can't fit in the toy. Yeah, that's like saying you've got to pay more for your shoes because there's more leather, which is true. Which is absolutely true. It's no, a nightmare yeah, getting shoes. But fat people have to pay more for Do you know what? It's a nightmare getting chairs, comfy chairs that I can sit in in the home. I sit in a chair for very long and my back's killing me. Now, how is that not a disability? But no, I don't see, I don't, you don't see people like me whinging. But I think tall people, uh, I've read an article that taller people on average, uh, get, uh, higher wages through something, through, you know, an advantage that or just because they're taken more seriously than little dumpy fellas. <laughs> sure. Do you know what I mean? But I don't think so there are, I, I genuinely belts. don't think there are many benefits of being really tall. People seem to assume there are, but beyond the fact that I can reach things down from a high shelf. I know. I don't think there's any real perks. I've seen you hit your head a few times. That's I, a disability. I know, I have seen you hit your head a few times, and I think, oh God, that must have hurt. Obviously I'll make sure okay and then laugh. Of course. But I know it must be annoying. No, but I mean, there, there are, uh, there, there's a pub, there's one pub in Soho that he has to go down backwards. Yeah. <laughs> he has to leave that, it looks like a limbo dancer. Yeah, they've <laughs> almost got a lower <laughs> meaning on route. I always find it amusing. But, oh, it is, but like, for instance, on a plane, on an aeroplane, I can't get 
some of the seats I can't fit in some of the seats. Not yeah, in any but way. That's not, not the way that I could. Because some well, you're people, talking, how is that not a disability? There's some seats that people can't afford because they're poor. It's not that's a disability. What, that's Don't go on a plane then because you're poor. But if you can't afford to go on a plane, you can't afford to go on a plane. You should have studied hard at school. But what annoys, yeah, but I mean, what annoys me about that is, is there's, 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 there's a physical disability yeah, I was I'm born with. Before, there's a, there's a weight allowance, so I might not be allowed loads of bags on, but there might be a big fat pig in the queue who's allowed the same chocolate allowance as me. But that's because they've been eating like a bloater. I couldn't stop myself from growing this tall. It wasn't a conscious decision. I didn't think, I'll tell you what, <laughs> I won't, I won't smoke when I'm a teenager. Maybe I'll do up. <laughs> <laughs> I'll eat healthy. I'll probably add an extra two feet. Uh, they well just you, kept going. You do eat too healthy. You eat too way too many greens. But that's not why I grew to this height. It's I a know, genetic well, thing, isn't it? it? Yeah, but if you live near, a, you know, a, some sort of pylon or something, and just as, as I say, smoke from an early age, you wouldn't have been that don't, tall. Don't think when I was a gangly teenager having the piss taken out of me, I wasn't thinking <laughs> I wish I'd been born near a pylon. <laughs> could you, you know, or Chernobyl? Could your mum or dad like could have could they have banded you money. like they did with little? Uh, didn't they do that with someone's feet? Well, yeah, concubine. Yeah, yes. I didn't they, come they out this tall, did I? No, but no. I like it shot. How they banded him? They'd have to band him round the feet and round the top of the head. Yeah, we walk around like a mummy. <laughs> yeah, 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 or a bonsai boy. But I, people didn't really realise I was going to be this tall until I was fourteen or fifteen. Mm. You know, you don't realise when you're an eight-year-old. How tall, everyone's tall, how tall are you when you're about like a gangly? Okay, so that typical gangly teenager, fifteen. How tall are you at fifteen? I don't know, six foot five maybe. <laughs> And I bet you were like a beanpole, weren't you? Well, of course. Yeah. And what sort of glasses did you have? Cool. And now what did you have? I don't know, a monocle. <laughs> no, <laughs> I can't remember. Did you wear a bow tie once? Did when I you... wore a bow tie? I thought, I thought, I was trying to preempt <laughs> the styles that might be coming around. I mean, I think I've been watching a lot of George Formby films. <laughs> And I thought it can only be a lot. It can only be a matter of time before the bow tie comes in. I thought it might be quite kind of urbane and debonair. Yeah. So what was that? Was for Robin what? Day at the height of his fame around been. this time? Yeah. Yeah. I wanted to go for that dandy look. I thought <laughs> that's what the girls dandy, are going for. I know, yeah. The dandy. Oh dear. So I still just want to see my... you with a pipe and trilby. Yeah. I just think you'd look great I'd walking like on the street. Boater. <laughs> yeah. Oh, but I dear. genuinely, I, I really, it does frustrate me that I don't get any allowances it for being count brutal. As a disability. Well, it does count. No, it doesn't. It's not a disability being six foot seven. But there how is. can you explain, for instance, uh, you know, travelling on a bus or a coach? There's some the seats only I can't see. The advantage is, uh, um, people look at, I've, I've seen people stare at you, um, but they stare at me because I've been on the telly. What's that a disability? Are that people being recognised? Yes, but you could avoid that by not being on the telly. It's your choice. This yeah. is my point. It's your choice. Yeah, it's the same okay. as the big fat people. And it's their yeah. choice. It's a different sort of stare, isn't it? I've been there. Yeah. When, you know, the sort of stare that you get and the sort of, sort of stare, stare Well, obviously gets. I'm gonna, sorry Steve, but I'm gonna, you know, Follow up this inquiry. What do you mean, Carl? No, so I'm just saying it's more of a stare of, of fear than, like, with you, the goal. Oh, it's him. Yeah, go on. Whereas with you, it's more like, jeez. <laughs> <laughs> I, do you know what frustrates me? <laughs> I, I thought he did deserve having a Monday off. I've changed yeah. my tune. Yeah, yeah. I was try sometimes, I mean, you don't realise this, listeners, but sometimes I'm an intermediary. I do step in when he's winding him up, because yeah. Carl gets to the point where he's going to explode. Yeah, and it's crazy. okay, Joe, but leave And I step little in, while. and this yeah. is the kind of response I get from Carl. This is the kind of back chat I get Well, I tell you, he's a little user. Because I'll tell you what, because he's too scared of winding you up, because he knows that you'll just walk out of here and he won't get his Monday off. Absolutely. Play a record, you little oik. Weasel. Jeez. You're a weasel. <laughs> Joe Jackson, different for girls on XFM 104.9. Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington, he's annoying me now. Cause he's, he's, he's got a day off and he's got two hours and he's miserable. He's not even doing anything to the show. It really annoys me. Well, hang on, wait a minute. What? You, you've forgotten his brilliant film quiz. Yeah. He's contributed that. That he probably did during the week. Well, Do you know uh, what I mean? What are you, gonna, are you gonna change your attitude, Carl, or what? Or should we just like not bother with this show? Told you. What? Don't, don't annoy me and you'll get the best out of me. Yeah? I, can't, I told you, I, I told you, this show is to annoy you. You knew that. But this is what you're gonna get. Do you know what I mean? But no, you've got, you've got to be good and get the day off or there's no point for uh, any of us. Right, if you were having an operation, would you annoy the doctor? What? You can't concentrate, can he? <laughs> Don't mind him up. That he's a doctor. <laughs> All of a sudden. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's got to press a button and find out what a monkey did in <laughs> 1932. <laughs> and it's, oh. Where's the monkey news? It's, it's been a bit quiet, hasn't it? I've been What, in the last three out. months? Look, uh, there was something that I found last week about, uh, one that was in an old people's home. 
um, <laughs> it, it escaped from some zoo, it was wandering about, it was enjoying itself, and then when it got to the night time, it was like, oh, what am I gonna do? <laughs> and the first place it came across was like this old people's home. Yeah. Went in there, I think it was there for about a week and a half, <laughs> without anyone realising. No. No, no, no. No, no, it did. No, what, what, so, so the, the helpers and the nurses and the, the social workers and the, the matrons and all that, they thought, well, uh, Mr. Sanders looks a bit hairy. <laughs> but, I mean, that happens, you know, it comes out of your ear and your nose when you get to about 70. <laughs> and he stooped over, yeah, of course he has, he's got bow legs, yeah. And he eats more fruit, of course he does. Well, that, that's when they, that's when they realised. Why? Because someone in the kitchen said, hang on a minute, getting through more bananas than we know. <laughs> 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 uh, uh, right, sure. do the competition, do the one thing you've done this week, probably in their time again, you're getting paid for it, you're having Mondays right, so off yeah, and you're not that, into it, so, that, that waste film, of time. That film sounds good, it's yeah. like this. Yeah, okay. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> I'm well happy yeah. now I've had that. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> right. yeah. So that's a bit of a cryptic clue. Yeah. Uh, someone eating this woman. Yeah. And he's happy that yeah. he had that. Yeah, go on, yeah. That was Gladiator. So, yeah. who, who wins a this? A couple of people sent I, in, I, I sent in Hannibal, which would still work. Yeah. And, um, someone else sent in Maneater, which I suppose works as well. Although he did put the thing in about, I'm well happy. Glad. Yeah. yeah, I know. I know, it's not, so. it's, it's not worth the, uh, I don't know, under he gets with this in a day off, no. Well, not Eva, who got the answer right, Eva, who got the answer right, well done to her, I'm gonna give her the prizes, she said that she'd heard this before on Christian O'Connell's show. Ah, uh, this is really annoying. Right, that's it. You're gonna do summer or we're gonna stop this and you have to work Mondays again, cos you are taking the piss out of me, you're taking the piss out of Graham, and you're taking the piss out of London. I'll see you next week and you can change your attitude. Biscuit. We may be back next week, it depends how Carl uh, gets on, maybe right. bucks up his attitude. Thanks for listening. Yeah, 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 darkness. I believe in a thing called love on XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais, you're Steve, Steve Merchant. Merchant, you sure? That's little Carl Pilkington Carl over Pilkington. there. Where is he? There yeah, he is. There he is, yeah. Alright. Yeah. <laughs> hey! Right. Back then, back together again. The old gang. Yeah, it started last week. Yeah, I think. Triumphant return. I think it went well last week, didn't it, Carl? Good show, wasn't it? You loved it, didn't you, Carl? Brilliant, right? Yeah. Yeah. Now, uh, you weren't speaking to Suzanne last week at this time because <laughs> you said she had a haircut, probably quite an expensive haircut. She's a lady in media. She's got to look good. She, goes, she probably doesn't go to the barber like you or just shave it at home. Probably spent quite a little bit of money on it. She came home, she thought, well, my, my, my lover. sweetheart, my lover, my sweetheart, my, you know what I mean? The man well, in my, my life is gonna, is gonna love this. Well, he adores everything about me, he's gonna love my hair. She walked in, hello, Carl, all right? You look like Dave Hill from Slade. <laughs> is what you said to the poor woman. And then, talked about it on air, she was furious about that, did so what did you do? Carl? She uh, did listen, yeah. She wasn't happy. Did you hear you slagging her hair off? Yeah. She, well, what so this is probably annoying her now. <laughs> well, no, it doesn't matter. We can do a lot today because she's at work. <laughs> so, and of course, no one's going to tell her. Let's have a chat about a fat ass, shall we? <laughs> <laughs> so, hold on. <laughs> oh dear. Oh dear. You oh. are in so much trouble. That's. <laughs> Look, he's realised he has. He is a little bit worried. Oh, didn't you? Didn't you go and buy her a coat or something? Took, her, took her out on Sunday and treated her to uh, a new coat and that. But I offered, I said as well, I said I'd pay, I said I'd pay to have it done again. Oh no! Carl, you have, oh god! Oh my Christ! So she listened to the show, what did she say? You got home, she'd heard you slagging her hair off. Imagine, I mean, imagine that, he thinks that's a good thing to, sort of like, we've won the pools, brilliant, what are we doing? Well you can have facial surgery now, love. <laughs> it's sort of like, it's just, oh Christ! <laughs> you offered to have it done again. Unbelievable. Oh. But, but I, I, so, yeah, I, I got home and uh, she's like all being moody with me, right? <laughs> yeah. You thought something was uh, wrong, she must have listened to the show yeah. when I was slagging off her hair. <laughs> well, well you, his first thought was she probably looked at herself in the mirror. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah, that barber's been round again. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And um, she just said, "Oh, that wasn't very nice of you, was it?" Oh. So I just said, "Hang on a minute." I said, "That's that's what we do on the show, when I'm slagging off, you know, Chinese people looking old or whatever." So you never interfere. <laughs> sure. I love the fact! She's gotta get her priorities. Right? I love the fact 
that she's in the same queue <laughs> as a billion people you've never met. Yeah. Uh, mm. that's fantastic. She's in the same queue. Well, they, well, you didn't complain well, no, when I was because slagging Because Carl, off. I don't think Carl has ever admitted he might be in the wrong, ever. Certainly not to your eye. So did that you admit- That is so true. Isn't it? That is so true. He's never admitted that he might be in the wrong. So did you, in this instance, agree that maybe you'd overstep the mark? No, I just said she, she took it badly. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I mean? I mean, it's only a haircut. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, well. See, Steve, you, you haven't see seen it, so you can't- you can't start interfering on sure. this one. No, okay. No, I haven't seen it, but I, well, I, ver I very much doubt she looks like da Dave Hill from Slade, who, if I'm, uh, uh, unless I'm mistaken, used to cut his hair with garden shears blindfolded. <laughs> well. Um, so, you know what I mean? And did her teeth stick out when she started speaking with a brummy accent as well? I've got used to it now anyway. So. And so did you, you bought, so <laughs> at one point, at some point you came crawling back and you said, do you want me, do you want me to buy you a coat? I just said, let's, let's leave that, let's go out and have a good weekend. Sure. But get your hat before we go. <laughs> and, um, uh, oh, treat, God. Treat, treat it to a new coat and that. Oh. It's, sort of, it's a nice coat, so it takes, people will look at that rather than there. Look, looking at the head. So if anyone- does it do flash? It's got obscenities across the back. If anyone who knows Carl's girlfriend is listening- Tell her. And, um, maybe you're a work colleague and you're listening to the show. Because I think this is terrible. Get her to phone him now. Get her to phone him now. Uh, I mean, get, get her to phone on the XFM number. What's the, the, what's the, what's the, what's the fat ass uh, complaint line? <laughs> because you are in deep shite. <laughs> Cemetery Gates by the Smiths, of course, off the Queen is Dead. Album. Lovely tune. Great Makes you happy, doesn't it? Absolutely. That's a nice song about dead people. Yeah, beautiful. I, um, just wondering what your opinions are, what your thoughts are on. on Britney Spears. Uh, liked a couple. Bit bored. She, oh. I think she's panicking a little bit. I think she's a little bit desperate with all this Madonna stuff. Yeah, all the kind of lesbian yeah, stuff. Yeah, I don't know, I don't know. Um, you know, um, yeah, she's alright. I've got nothing against the girl. Well, I read, I think it was in Hot Tickets magazine. Sure. Uh, it's free with Evening Standard. Yeah. Um, oh, I might get some free thing standards now. I've plugged that. Yeah. Um, I, uh, was just reading in there that, I don't know if it's still gonna happen, but apparently she was gonna do a little cheeky appearance at G-A-Y. G-A-Y? In, uh, in London. And, uh, obviously I was quite excited, I'm a Spears fan. You know, sorry, do you know that's what that's about, don't you? G-A-Y? Yeah. Gay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I think it is a gay club. Oh, sure, this is what I, This is what I was ascertaining from the article. Oh, because they've, yeah, so they've yeah, said, yeah, they've yeah, just yeah. said, they've called it what, sort of what it is. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And, um, and it, apparently she was gonna, she was gonna be, uh, previewing some of her new album, live on stage, at GAY, and that's an intimate venue, normally you'd have to see someone like Spears, probably at Wembley Arena, something like yeah. that. Yeah. I'm thinking, I'm a Spears fan, you know, get a couple of the gang together. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Some of the lads. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Cruise down there. Yeah. Uh, but then I read on in the article that apparently, the doorman at GAY were only gonna let in, uh, regulars, and the way they were going to ascertain if you were a regular was by asking a series of questions at the door. What, testing if you're testing really- you know, No, I don't know if the questions would be about the interior of GAY. Or the interior of <laughs> someone else. Yeah, 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 yeah. Or just, just general kind of, Like, you know. what, what, do you reckon you'd have passed the, uh, pretend- Well, that's what so I was wondering- So, I was you, wondering so you'd have had to pretend to be- GAY. GAY to get yeah. in to see Spears. Now Can that- you say gay on that, the radio? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Um, uh, but now, I, that's, there's irony, isn't it? So you're pretending to be gay to get into a club to mm. see a bird that yeah, you like. Yeah, yeah, I've yeah. Got, I'll, I'll give you a little quick test. <laughs> Shall I? Um, <laughs> all right. Uh, all right, uh, well, sorry, what's your name, mate? Um, Paolo. All right, Paolo. Yeah. Um, you, right, it, you haven't done a lot with your hair, you just sort of let it, sort of let it grow out. I mean, yeah. would you be putting product on a bit later? Because, I mean, you don't look very, I've been mean, sort of like, you don't, you look sort of quite, Quite masculine, quite. Yeah, well, sort of like, like you didn't care, like you have no care no, about no, how no. you look, like you're a. I no, mean, well, like, normally it would be shaved. Oh, okay. Yes. We would say normally that looks about like three months growth there. Why haven't you? I've been ill. <laughs> nothing yeah, serious. Nothing serious. Okay. No, that's why I let it grow. So it's grown. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So what? What time would you normally be going out then? Probably? Normally I'd go out about sort of. Uh, I'd go out about eightish. Eight. Eight o'clock in the evening no, you go? No, 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 Because no, that sounds a bit early, that's what- No, no I'd go out about three in the morning normally. Right, so I was like, yeah, okay, well, yeah, right, right, so that's right, that's right, yeah. Where'd you go, down sort of- Old Compton Street for a coffee and then yeah. onto <laughs> yeah. G-A-Y, like with that, your yeah. little shaved head. head. 
Um, okay, well, well you, you, you're doing, you're doing fine. Sounding pretty good. Can I just ask you one final question? 20 I'm, I'm, bender points? Um, it's 20 bender points, so I'm just gonna let you in. Okay. I'm just gonna let, tell the guys to let you in. But, I'll ask you one more question. Yeah. Do you prefer... knobs or tits, <laughs> oh. Paolo? Uh, well, uh, knobs. Knobs, you love knobs, do you? Okay. Can't get enough knobs. So, you, what, you hate tits, I assume? Loathe them. Loathe you them. hate tits, do you? Yes. Okay. What, even Liza Minnelli's? <laughs> I don't know what to say. I... Yeah, I love hers. But not in a not in a straight not way. In a straight way. In a so okay, okay. So you, you love you love knobs more than tits, right? Knobs more than tits. Okay, I okay. Love knobs. In you go. <laughs> Thanks very much. Uh, you know Britney's yeah. on, do you? Oh, she's so sexy. Oh. But see, that's what would give me away. Like, I know. Great escape. You just just last. Yeah. You just. Well, you, you're. I, I mean, I think you're probably a bit bi. <laughs> right. Yeah, okay. but I mean, go in anyway. Thanks yeah. very much. Okay, the drinks are quite expensive. Oh, Pop your shirt off. Will you? <laughs> Hey, uh, Outcast on XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington. You alright, Carl? Yeah, yeah, not bad. Yeah? Just, um, when you were talking just now about, like, like the gay stuff. Yeah. Right, I don't know if you saw, uh, the thing the other week about the fella who's on that quiz show. Who? Sort of- Oh, right, okay. Gay Who? fella, straight, sort of man, man-woman. What are you talking about? What, what, tell me the, what, 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 what did you see? Tell me what you saw. It's uh, This is like a kid face. come running in, and he's <laughs> seeing something frightening. It might, yeah. could be an alien, could be a ghost, could be a paedophile, <laughs> and you've got to get exactly what actually saw out of him. <laughs> right, what did you actually see? It's just this, this fella who's a, who's a woman. Right. Um, <laughs> right, okay, right, try and talk like a human being. Right. It's, it's a quiz show that's coming on the telly, and, um, it's this, this woman, uh, right, is it a fella who's a woman, or is it a woman? It's a bit of both, that's why I'm talking about it. <laughs> but what do you mean? Is it a pre-op, is it a transsexual, a transvestite, is, is, is it a lady boy, it. is it an hermaphrodite, what is it? I'll tell you about it. Well I'm tell me. You. I'm telling you. It's, it's, it's a woman, N well it's a man. <laughs> oh, for, oh no, listen, forget it. Listen. Play a record. No, listen. No, come on. What? It's, 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 it, it is a man. He is a man. Well. <laughs> <laughs> oh Christ's sake! It's a TV program where they've got this transvestite man who's a, or a, television. It is a transvestite, yeah. So, but, but the problem is, uh, I'll tell you just because you don't know about it. The program is. I don't know. I still don't know about <laughs> it. I don't know anything about it. Still, I don't know. It's a woman, man, man, woman, man, man, woman, TV, TV program, look, t TV. No, it's a, it's a man who is now sort of half a woman. <laughs> and <laughs> a man who is now half a woman. No, well, this is what's weird about it. He's, <laughs> he's got the top half. <laughs> but not the bottom half. What do you mean? Out. He's got breasts and a wig, but he's still got his his boys downstairs. He's Why got. Do you do that? He's, his caps and the boys what are still there in his wife fronts. Why But upstairs, that? he's got a lovely pair of dumplings. Why do that? Well, he's halfway through. But why not get it all done in one one go? Maybe he couldn't afford it. Well, wait until you've got all the money. That just looks a mess. <laughs> <laughs> And who's he pleasing there? Uh, <laughs> well, he wakes well, up in the morning and pleases himself. He can't believe his luck. He doesn't yeah. know where to start. <laughs> no, but what I don't understand, I mean, do, you know, I don't want to see him. Well, because I just finished that sentence. What you don't understand is just about everything. <laughs> yeah. Right. What, no, what? I find it weird, right? I sort of get, I, I understand the, the gay thing, right? <laughs> but. Do you? What do you mean? Well, you know, I, I know. Well, I tell know, me the gay thing. Explain well, the gay I thing. I just know if you, you're a fella, you like, you like men. I don't know much more than that. What do you mean you don't know? But what I mean is. <laughs> With a transvestite, what's going on there? What what do they want? A transvestite is is, is a, a a cross dresser. See, I don't I don't get that either. <laughs> because you mean a transsexual? That's, somebody, that's a man who likes to dress in women's clothing. It's not necessarily they're not necessarily gay. They're not gay. They're anything. often not gay. They just happen to like wearing women's Those clothes. Those clothes, aren't yeah. But, but then why not wear women's clothes that could be seen as a bloke, like Suzanne wears jeans? No, but they, yeah, just but that's the thing. Jeans. But that's, that's, that's their problem, is it? They, they, they like being seen as a, as a, as a, as a woman. They like being seen as a woman. It's not just that it's more comfortable or they wear a kilt. They like being seen as a woman. They feel more comfortable. Alright, and what's the deal with this fella who's got- We don't both? know who this fella is. No. 
We don't know this man is half a woman. He's called Miriam. Oh, that's hot. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Brilliant. I love this scientific basis. No, I'm saying- So all he's done, he's- he's had the tits done, he's probably had the hormones, he's probably lived as a woman for a while. The last step that- cause you can probably reverse the breasts anyway, cause they're- they're probably implants and hormonal things and- whereas you- you chop your knob and, um, boys off. That's, you know, you come back the next day and go, sorry, I didn't mean that, I- I want my ears pierced. It's a bit more of a bigger operation to put them back. So, doctors are probably making sure that he's just I'm up sure to- if you've had the top half done, you're not gonna go back on what you've said. But no, what's the top half being done? You- you-, you I could have- I could get you breast implants, give you a bit of hormonal treatment- No, that and would you could be a great idea for next week. <laughs> and, you, and you could reverse it. What you can't do is grow a knob back. Well, you can. And last week we were talking about growing one on your arm. Yeah. We've done that. We've come to that. <laughs> so that is possible. <laughs> but the thing is, I, the truth of it is, I think I do know about this story. I think it was a television program called There's Something About Miriam. The oh. conceit of which was that this pre-op transsexual- So I guess that right, yeah. Um, was masquerading as a woman. Right. And various blokes, un who didn't realise that this was a man, <gasps> had to, uh, oh, I've heard try about and this. seduce him, her. And when they found out that it was actually a bloke, and they, a lot of them had kissed uh, I him agree. her, they uh, they refused to let it be shown. I, I, agree, I agree, though. I, I, that's, I, I, that's just terrible. Yeah, that's oh, just But I mean, you know, that's awful. I, I, I yeah, I, I hated that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, so what? Um, I think it was a Sky One program. Is there anything other than The Simpsons on Sky One that's <laughs> worth watching? <laughs> Have you ever tried to watch that? Have you ever seen Kirsty's home videos? Yes. Mm. Yeah. But it's, it's, it's things like it's dogs, dogs on a slide, babies falling over. Do you know, it's uh, only recently reduced from an hour in length. Really? It's been an hour long, and it was just, if you haven't seen it, it's just like camcorder footage, like you know what I like? people falling I, over. I like an old woman at a wedding falling over and showing her blues. <laughs> That's, That's my favourite. I like it when it's Kirsty's uh, home videos uncut. So it's kind of four old women, like, naked. With their tits falling out. Windsurfing. Oh, Christ, it, it, imagine it, that. Does it whistle? Well. <laughs> It's just a, it's just, I mean, <laughs> have you ever really sat and watched anything on, on Sky One? No. That wasn't- The, the Simpsons. Or, Star, I think or, or the, Star Trek. I think that's what I watch on, I, I think that's or pretty wrestling. much what I watch. Wrestling? They have WWF wrestling, cartoons, and just the worst programs. I mean, it's I've seen a bit of the wrestling, it's, it's hilarious. It but is it's hilarious. Like a, it's like a station that's made by a 14 year old boy. Yeah. Well, I think, I think that's probably what it is, isn't it? Yeah. That, I mean, that's exactly the demographic. Do you like Sky One, Carl? I haven't got, I haven't got satellite ever, so. Why can't, why not? I thought you'd have loved that. No, I would love it. I'd oh, Discovery Channel's all about I know, I know, I know. slugs and that and weird stuff like that. I know. Chimps. I was reading there's about a, slugs the other day. There's a thing uh, on one of the channels called Monkey Business. Yeah, I watched that. Yeah. Because I was doing that thing, wasn't I, with Richard Bacon. Yeah. Where you watch the telly and that. You're talking riddles. Mm. You actually talk in riddles and forget a play record. You should be the gatekeeper in some kind of Dungeons and Dragons. Hello, boys game. Uh, uh, right, yeah. Let me enter. Right, yeah, but I was doing that thing with Richard Bacon. What can he mean? <laughs> what can he mean? He is the wise There's one. There's a man who's also a woman. Yeah, yeah. The upper is half it? is, but is the bottom. Yeah, play record. Bit of clash. Oh, yeah. Come on. Train in vain. Extra fame. Wonderful. Oh. Johnny Cash, Hurt, on XFM, 104.9, that's brilliant, isn't it? Good. I'm Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington. So, what have we done? We've done gays, transvestites, have we done knob use yet, or? It's nice not? that you can talk about pre-op transsexuals nowadays on the radio. I know. You know, without the fear of complaints or I know. listeners. Listeners, <laughs> that's the thing. If we had any listeners, we'd get complaints, we really wouldn't would. we? We really would. We'd get some serious complaints if yeah. anyone cared enough. That's to why pick we haven't gone to, a, to a, a decent station with, you know. A big we would audience. never do on a, on a real radio station. We could never do this. No, could we? why We'd not? Why not? See, I, I'm not doing this to like mess about and offend anyone. I think it's an interesting topic. What you talking gobbledygook? Not really knowing what. Yeah, uh, Carl, what woman, Carl, for the first five minutes, you couldn't talk. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Look, um, although, although, with, you know, the, the, you know, who's the biggest, most professional person in radio? It's probably Terry Wogan, isn't mm. it? And it was it you that said you can't tell what the sentence he's saying because no. he keeps coming up at the end before. But he never. After. There's well, never well, any well, punctuation. Well, hey, yeah. So yeah. he'll just segue <laughs> from one point to the next, and he'll be like, going on my holidays, 
Friday. We're having a lovely time, says <laughs> Mrs. <laughs> Dorothy Sheehan <laughs> of Westminster. I'm thinking of going to Greece. <laughs> oh, and it's so, uh, so he's got his knobs, but he's still got the tits. <laughs> exactly. yeah. yeah. Typical. <laughs> Typical. Oh, hello, Paolo. Do you want to come into my club yeah, to see? I'd love to go. Britney Spears, Britney Spears. I'm a massive fan. Yeah, well, it doesn't start for a while. It's sure. uh, it's only about eight o'clock, and you know you're not going out for hours yet. I no, no, about no, eight no, or seven. No, no. But um, might as well watch a bit of telly. We've got uh, FA Cup final. Ooh. Oh, yeah. Just that's a good one, isn't it? Or we've got um, the Eurovision Song Contest. What do you want to watch, Paolo? Oh, blimey, blimey. Well, I love all the um, the camp and lame. Right. Of the Eurovision Song Contest. Yeah. I, oh. Is that David Beckham playing? Because I love him. Oh, his I see hair what you've done. Legs. See what you've done. You see? So you will watch the football. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you'll be mainly looking at Just the. Just looking at the, the, the legs and the tight yeah. the tight joints. So while Beckham's knocking him in. Yeah. You'll be. <laughs> exactly. Knocking. <laughs> one. Um... Right. Let's, uh. Did you know, I just remember, I don't, I mean, I never really looked, but when you see old clips of, say, early 80s footballers, the shorts are much tighter, aren't they? I think, I mean, I don't know. I don't, <laughs> I don't really know. I don't I know. Do really you, I remember Carl saying when he went and there was two strippers, a bloke <laughs> and a woman, and they whipped off their clothes at the same time, and you looked straight at the boys. Yeah, everybody pack. would. You would have done. Right. You do do. You do do. You look at his do do. What do you mean? <laughs> you look at his do do. No, what? I'm just saying, if you were there, you would have done the same. Two people on the stage. Yeah. Woman and a man. Yeah. They were getting the clothes off. Yeah. Right. The fella. Took his pants off the same time as the girl took her knickers off. Yeah, right. right. All I'm saying is it's human nature. So have a, have a quick look, have a quick glance, see what's going on. <laughs> see what's going on! And then I wanted, I wanted to look at the woman, but she put her knickers back on quick. <laughs> <laughs> she didn't live opposite from you, did she? But just, sorry, just to return briefly to the shorts question. I, yeah. It's only because in the 30s and 40s, they were huge shorts, weren't yeah. they? Yeah. I mean, genuinely massive, like, yeah, uh, huge. A small child could wear them as trousers, they were- I think that's to do with comfort and decency though, isn't it? And then, but by the sort of 80s, there was barely any shorts there. I think that was fashion. But it's weird that it's- uh, you feel like at some point someone's gone, guys, I mean- They've gone too today, small. But <laughs> it's ludicrous. But that's- but that's what happened, isn't it? Because, you know, it's- things get bigger and bigger and bigger, and then they get smaller and smaller and smaller. Yeah. And fashion, it's like, like flares, yeah. drain pipes, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. heels, flat. Yeah. Tall hats, <laughs> flat hats. <laughs> Yeah. What do you make of the miniskirt? Uh, long hair, skinhead. <laughs> yeah. Miniskirt, uh, again, I don't know, they, I'm, I'm sure there's been ten resurgences of miniskirts yeah. since 65, whatever yeah, it was. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's fashion, so the short, uh, you know what, do you know what I think, Steve? I think the shorts will get smaller again before we die. <laughs> I think we'll see one more tight little packet <laughs> of Premiership footballers <laughs> running round with their awful, squeezed, yeah. Like, uh, like uh, the last chicken in a butcher's window. <laughs> Almost protruding. Wrapped up, yeah. Yeah. Well, imagine if they just wore cling film shorts so you could see what was happening there, Carl. Where would you look then? Because you like football, don't you? We're doing Rockbusters. <laughs> oh, I suppose so. Go busters. on then. Oh. Right, uh, we brought it back. Uh, this is where I give a cryptic clue. Well. And some initials. Yeah. And you work it out and you win some stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I was going to tell you what the prizes are. Needless to say, they're mediocre prizes for a mediocre quiz. Sure, okay, yeah. Oh, Where's well, right, DVDs and VHS? And yeah, 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 yeah. VHS, who's still got that? Right, so there's three, three of them, and what you can do now, we've tweaked it a bit. Okay. You can text in. Mm -hmm. Right, so you can email or text. We've tweaked it a bit. Mm. Right? <laughs> 83XFM is the text, or it's ricky.gervais at xfm.co.uk. Is that what it is? 83XFM? That's it. That is good though, and it's convenient, because who's got their laptop up and running and exactly. texting? On so just with your phone. Brilliant. All right. Mine so, can do that. I don't know how to do that on my phone. I don't know how to get. What do you my, mean? Huh? What do you mean? My brother wanted my postcode. He said, text it to me. Mm. I couldn't work out how to do W, C, and That's 1. Because you're an old man. It's so I had, to, I had to write out double U, C, 1. Oh, for goodness sake. Because I didn't know how to do it. I can't, it, it, just, it won't do it for me. Pathetic. It's ridiculous. Go well, on. Well, it's 83936 if, if you have that problem. Right? Right, come on. Get on with the quiz. I right, don't know. Three, There's too many numbers, mate. Three, uh, Three clues, here we go. First one is, uh, this Teletubby has got lice. <laughs> right? This Teletubby has got lice. This Teletubby has got lice. Right. The initial there is P, so it's a band or an artist yep. that starts with P and the clue is, this Teletubby has got lice. Right? Yep. Um, second one. <sighs> I'm, I'm really, already not holding out much hope I for this. <laughs> Working out, go on. Uh, right, second one. 
I've just messed up first one up there. Right? <laughs> oh, for Christ. But when what? I give it out later, it'll be, we'll, I'll sneak it in without, right? Just don't repeat anything I say. You're an idiot. Listen, you really are an idiot. No, play a record. Play a record. Play a record. You're a fool. Play a record. Let me just. No, no, no. Press the no, you've ruined it. You're an idiot. It's off. Ludicrous. Red Vines by Amy Mann. Brilliant, that isn't it? Very good. On XFM 104.9. Well, um, Carl mucked up Rockbusters as usual. I mean, it's, uh, you know what? I like it when he mucks up early because it doesn't waste people's lives sure. for 40 minutes realizing he's mucked it up at the end. Yeah. So, obviously, people are already. They, they know what it is. They know what it is already. They've said, well, it's police, isn't it? You meant to say nits instead of lice. Yeah. You're an idiot. So that one's gone. So what, what have you got next? Right, so that's just an idea. If you haven't heard it before, that's, that's how my head works. Right, this Teletubby has got nits. So Poe. P, so Poe is a Teletubby. Yeah. Uh, so, so, so when he says cryptic, it's not only what the, what the answer is, it's what the question was meant to be. Sure. So. Alright, so there's only two, so you've got even a better chance of winning than that. Well. So, the second one is, I'm saving that money to buy condoms. Alright. Think about it. Easy. Too easy. J right. J C. Yeah, right, well that's, that's too- that's uh, so everyone's got that one. I feel like saying it now. Yeah, but so don't- that's, don't Well that's say rubbish. It yeah, but you've got to have an easy one in there, otherwise people get bored, don't First they? one was easy, we gave them the answer. Yeah, but- hang on. <laughs> that's the easiest one we've ever had. Police. And the- and the- <laughs> and the second one is- Yeah. Uh, when you're making bread, add a little bit of colour for a change. Alright? When you're making bread, add a little bit of colour, just change things a little bit. What are the initials? Right? D. Just D. Just D. Right? right? So, what you've got there, I'm saving that money to buy condoms, the initials mm -hmm. JC. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's easy, yeah. Next. And, uh, and when you're making some bread, just chuck some, chuck some colour in there. Sure. You know what I mean? Chain, yeah. Change, change yeah, it yeah, a bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that, uh, yeah, yeah. Like the clue, the clue changes every time. <laughs> yeah. The clue changes every time. <laughs> Unlike the Times crossword, the clue changes every time it's there. 83XFM is one of or it's Ricky Dr. Bay's. <laughs> At xfm.co.uk. Rubbish. That, right? Pointless. XFM. David Bowie and Waterloo Sunset. Love that. Love the original. Yeah. Love that one. Love the original on yeah. XFM 104.9. Good work to David Bowie and the Kinks. Yeah, 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 yeah. big time. Big time. Um, reading the paper there, yeah, Steve? Yeah, well, I don't normally read the paper, but no. um, I was having a glance through the Daily Express. Does anyone read the Express? Well, um, you do at the moment, look. Well, true. <laughs> Live on air. Yeah. Read well, it out, and then uh, about 400 people will know what's in it. <laughs> <laughs> I just read, I was obviously attracted, uh, by this little news item Gun cool. Raid by Three Saddams. Uh, three armed men. Oh, wearing, they're up to their old tricks again, yeah, aren't they? Yeah. yeah. Three armed men wearing Saddam Hussein masks were on the run last night after robbing a corner shop. The raiders threatened the worker with a handgun and knife, ordering him to open the till, blah, 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 get the money out. And it says that they also tried to rob an earlier shop earlier in the day. Police said, we are linking the raids because the descriptions of the offenders are very similar. <laughs> <laughs> what was the, what did the first one not quite get yeah, right? Yeah. Well, they looked very similar. <laughs> I right. think it was Gaddafi, three Gaddafis. Right, because that's weird, because we've had three uh, Saddam Hussein's down the Oh, so that, that's what I meant. Is Saddam it the same guys? Well, I, well wanna, I assume so, I wouldn't have thought. I don't want to, I don't want to, you know, <laughs> no, 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 get no, the Gaddafi guys same. on the Saddam Hussein No, I, no, I, I'm, I'm almost sure <laughs> it, it'd be the same way. I didn't know, I, one's got a moustache, haven't they, and one's like a devil, or they've got a moustache, I don't know. <laughs> but I mean, it's, there were three blokes with masks. Middle Eastern appearance, I don't know, but I mean, I imagine it's the same I am, because I've only ever seen really, um, robberies being planned in films. Sure. So I don't know how it works, I assume that- So you say. <laughs> yeah. But I assume at some point someone's got to get together, one of them, the ringleader's got to get together and go, okay, well we need to wear masks, obviously just guys our pace, yeah. I'm thinking of going with the regular stockings. No, no, no. No. <laughs> I'd say it would be funny. <laughs> well, I don't want to be funny. Well, no, no. I we well, want no. to strike fear into the hearts of yeah, people. Yeah, but I mean, kill two birds with one stone, we get the robbery and we have a laugh with it. Fear, do you say you want to strike fear? Well, wear a mask of someone who's really scary. Who's the scariest bloke in the world? Well, I, I don't know, so that makes sense. 
I've got three of them. <laughs> well, what, why? I've, got, I've got three of them. Let's all wear Saddam the same way. It'd be a laugh. Well, it's not, I don't want it to be a laugh. I'm no, but it won't, don't hurt if we're having a laugh and that's what I want, I want to make money and have a laugh. <laughs> why? Along that's what, like, well, I'm yeah. only in the money, I'm only in it for the money. money. Yeah, yeah, but it's I mean, not important to well, me. Well, no, it's- uh, Fear, I want to strike fear. We could also make a political point. I don't want to make a political point. No, you just want the money. I'm a thug, I'm not, I'm not We could have a laugh and we could make a political point. Why not? What political point? Whether it's, we you know, maybe we're sort of stealing for the rich and giving- Well, not Robin Hood. Well, never mind Robin Hood, let's rob Barclays. That's what, the, why are you making jokes? Well, I mean, don't worry, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do my stuff. I'm gonna do my stuff. <laughs> you're, so, you're a comedian, you don't- I'm not well, sure you let's should just be in this Well, let's wear the mask. Let's wear the mask. <laughs> How did it happen? <laughs> did they go and buy them? It's separately, look, look, spread yeah. out. Look, you go to the joke shop in Covent Garden, yeah. I'll go to the one in Southampton Row. Yeah. Brilliant. See, I- cause it's so often the case that they're using masks, it used to be Reagan, Thatcher, they're always a- If I was the guy selling those, like, when three guys came in, three shifty looking blokes to yeah. buy three identical masks- Yeah, in stockings. <laughs> in stockings. Just so <laughs> exactly. they don't know who we are. Sorry, yeah. can I just check, you're not gonna rob- Definitely not. With these masks. But just think of the police looking at those robbers. I, every time they go past one of those awful- Sort of gift shops. They think that, oh no, it's just, a, it's just in the window there with, uh, with Michael Jackson and, uh, Shirley Bassey. Yeah, George Bush. Oh, Paolo, can I ask you something? I yeah. know you love knobs and that, and you hate tits. Yeah. What about Shirley Bassey's tits? Oh, well, I mean, I'm a fan of them because I'm a fan of Shirley, but I don't like them. You know, you cool, sexy. Yeah, you're, you're pretty bent. You are pretty bent. Come in. Thanks for it. Britney's on in seven hours. Excellent. Yeah, what are you doing yeah. out at this time? No, 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 I just came out to, uh, get some, uh, Nob. milk. <laughs> yeah, get some, uh, yeah, some cock in the toilet. <laughs> Carl. Oh. Plenty of answers, right. Carl, so far for your, um, I say yeah. quiz, I'm not sure that's really valid. Yeah, loads coming in, we're giving away some more stuff later as well, and that yeah. film thing, that's coming up, coming up. That's when you that. put yourself into a, a, a famous film, yeah. and you act out. Is that, is that it? You've yeah. done, you've done The Graduate, haven't you? Done The Graduate, done Silent of the Lambs, yeah. done, uh, Billy Elliot. I, I liked it, but you, um, what was your one, uh, a six cents. I see what it's done. Yeah, the six cents was good. <laughs> so well, that's coming up later. We're doing that later. That's well, we'll look, look forward to that. Look forward to we're that. We're pretty excited about that. Yeah. I'm assuming we've got some great music. Uh, well, like that. Thorns. Yeah. Thorns. Oh, I'm obsessed with this now. This is uh, the Thorns, and uh, I can't remember on XFM 104.9. Brilliant. <laughs> Strokes, 12.51 on XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant, and Carl Pilkington. Not done a lot. Maybe you should earn your money as you get to Mondays off for this two hours of nonsense. What are you on about? I've done loads of stuff. Go slag, on what? slag Suzanne off. Yeah, brilliant. First link. Yeah. Talks about trannies. <laughs> yeah. Well, right. Same old, same old. Yeah. Let's have something new. Something Come fresh. On. Well, I've been looking around, right, on the, on the internet for stuff. Yeah. On the internet? Yeah. Your Bible. Mm -hmm. Where you get all your information about the world and the universe <laughs> and the morality from. And you know, like, how I always say to you, I don't really read that much of it, I just read, read the headline. Perfect. Right? Yeah. Anna Nova, I sort of nicked that idea to grab you. <laughs> <laughs> to, to, <laughs> nicked what idea? Well, to sort of get to the meat straight away at the top. Do you know what I mean? The, the headline to the story and everything. What? Right, these are stories- But the headlines already existed, that was why you thought nah, that was a good idea? not like this though. Alright. <laughs> Headline. Well, these are all headlines, right? Vibrating shoes could stop elderly falling. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know oh, what I mean? Oh, God. You don't Vibrating need- Vibrating shoes could stop elderly falling. <laughs> yeah, that's the story. <laughs> you don't need to read on. That's what I'm saying. Well, right? could because you read on anyway? I can't be bothered. <laughs> Read on yeah. anyway. Well, Read you have a look at that in a bit, right? Oh, so, oh, okay. so what this is frustrating right. radio if you're sitting at home. No, well, you, you, it's not on. They've <laughs> turned it off. If yeah. you want to know more, you know where to go. That's what I'm saying. That's what they should do in the news. <laughs> Get the news done in, Bong. in, in a minute. There's a good story about Iraq. <laughs> right. Bong. Right. Right. Look it up. Look it up on the internet. Hand and over. Give us another bong. Bong. Family sick of living on Butthole Road. <laughs> Oh, ah, brilliant. oh, brilliant. Bong. Man wears same shoes for 60 years. <laughs> <laughs> oh, bong. This isn't that good. Uh, some fella pulls a train with his teeth. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and in lighter news. I know that. Triple Donald, this one isn't very good. And oh. then, uh, the last one, man fails to break clothes pegs on face record. <laughs> She's always good. Well, yeah. that's, that's the one I did read on about. 
<laughs> no, I <laughs> love that. All those. That's the one he went on about. Go on then. Just um. Why is that news? He fails to make a record. Mm. So did I today. <laughs> I, know, yeah. I failed the long jump record today. <laughs> yeah. Didn't even take part. No. <laughs> I was rubbish. But what are the rules on on world records and that? I don't. I don't know if there are rules. There are certain things you can't. I mean, it's it's the Guinness Book of Records, isn't it? Really, that's the arbiter, isn't it? Yeah, but. Is there anything, if you said you wanted to do it, would they say, well, you can't do that? Yeah, they've, they've stopped some gluttony records, obviously things that are in danger, th it's anything that's illegal, yeah, anything that's immoral. Yeah, like that, that American serial killer that just got discovered yeah. having killed 47 women, I don't think he can make that into the Guinness Book of Records. No, because people would be trying to beat it, won't they? <laughs> but there was some, some other story about a fellow eating watches and that, that can't be good for you, so why don't they say, look, don't do that, do something else. He wanted to stay regular. <laughs> <laughs> you know what, what do you mean? mean? I just, I just wondered what if What do you mean he was eating watches? He just said he was eating watches. He, he got, he had about three in about a minute. How did he, how did he time it? <laughs> do you know what I mean though? And then, the other thing is, the one, the one that I was reading the world record with the fellow who's pulling a train with his mm. teeth. Mm. Does, does that make any difference that he's done it with his teeth? What do you mean? Well, what difference would it make? Well, isn't it- it's quite hard to pull a train with your teeth, I imagine. Well, it's pretty hard to pull a train. <laughs> All I'm saying is, is it- is it because he couldn't beat the fella who's pulling it with his hands? Well, that's- so the, this is it. my point. There's uh, I think there was uh, one bloke with a record for the backwards- running backwards hundred metres was sort of like eleven and a half seconds. And I was thinking, turn around, you'd probably- you'd probably have a really good <laughs> go at that. Do you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. It's sort of like doing a marathon with a milk bottle on your head. <laughs> Take the milk bottle off and see how fast you can go, you twat. But you can just tweak it, like the fella who has done the pegs on the face, right? Yeah. Um, his name's Gary Stretch Turner, right? <laughs> right. So, he's sort of cheating already if he's, if he's got a stretchy head, right? <laughs> but, but you are, right, <laughs> you are one of the most stupid humans I have ever met. Well, get me in the book. <laughs> <laughs> Right? Well, listen. <laughs> so, Gary, Gary Stretch Turner, right? His record <laughs> is 153 pegs. Yeah. He did it again, and he only got 150 on. <laughs> so, he hasn't broke his own record. Right. But what I'm saying is, if he tweaked it a bit more, would that make a new record? What? Well, if, if he said, I've got 150 pegs on, but at the same time as eating a burger. <laughs> <laughs> like, see what you mean, yeah. yeah. He'd be the, or, or the it, world or record breaker for pegs and eating burgers at the same time. Yeah, just change it a bit. If you know <laughs> you're not gonna make it, just do something else. I'm assuming the rules are set at the beginning, Carl. That's yeah. it. That's where they say, right, you're just gonna do the pegs thing. You're not gonna introduce burgers halfway through, are you? Definitely not. <laughs> and okay. then they have a go. I was on one leg, not interested. How many pegs? 150. Can I just ask very briefly, I was quite interested by the family had to move because <laughs> they lived on Butthole Road. Yeah, I quite like that now, one. I, I don't know if I've told you before, Rick, where I used to live. I'm not going to tell you the name of the street that I used to live on, because not on air, because my parents still live there and I don't want right. to, you know. But I'm going to write it for you now. This is the name, the genuine name of the street I used to live on. Just imagine when you're at school. Yeah. And oh. like in class, for instance, in French, you've got to say they got you've got to answer where you live. Yeah, j'habite wherever. Yeah, that's the name. This is actually the name of the street we lived on. No, it's not. I swear <laughs> to God, <laughs> that is I'm absolute right. I could phone my father now and he could confirm that for well, you. No, I swear because he doesn't want to. to God. And I tell you what, that. But listen, do you know what worries me? It's the apostrophe s. I know, because that's blatant. Yes. Amazing, isn't it? That is incredible. But imagine how embarrassing. So that if was. I look that up in the Bristol, you'll find that in the Bristol A to Z. I swear. That to God. is really. Why have you never told me that before? I can't believe I haven't. That's. I'm incredible. still embarrassed now. Do you know if whenever I have to phone up, if I have to give that address, I always spell it instantly. Really? Like somehow that will hide it. That will disguise the name. But it's interesting. My friend Rufus, his parents lived in a place called Fockingham. <laughs> right. <laughs> this is amazing. When he was growing up, they, li he lived, they lived in Fockingham. Yeah. They moved. <laughs> To a village called Fingering Ho. No! I swear to God. Really? Amazing. Oh, well, God. Perhaps you come from an amusing town or street. Hello, oh, mate. Not F Fingering Ho or Fuckingham? <laughs> well, that's my business. <laughs> exactly. Well, this this family who's sick of living on uh, Butthole Road, <laughs> right, said so the thing that pushed them over the edge was the sign was outside their house, and tourists were always coming, sort of having the picture taken with the pants down <laughs> next to the sign. <laughs> oh, oh, no. That's, that's the thing that. What's it called? Butthole Road? Butthole Road, yeah. 
Well, uh, that's bad luck, isn't it? That is bad luck, isn't it? Who named it that, though? <laughs> exactly. Yeah, but it's not as if they've named it that after they've moved there. They bought the house knowing. Oh, there's a lovely house here, so where, where you live, what road it's on? Well, I'm gonna go, well, it doesn't matter, look at the house. <laughs> yeah! Yeah! Well, where, where am I going? Where am I seeing this Well, house? I'll take you there, I'll take you there. I'll take you there. Well, so, you don't need to look, just don't, don't look at that sign, just come into that lovely house, isn't it? It is nice, yeah. Well, my family wants to come later, so have a well, look at it. Well, just tell them to, I'll meet them, I'll meet them by the bus stop and I'll drive them here. <laughs> you don't need to, you don't need to know where you're going. You just, you just sort of know, won't you? You'll know from then on. How will we get letters? I'm delivered to me if you want. I'll, I'll bring them. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll bring them round. Don't worry about that. Don't worry about that. That's incredible. But I can't get over that. Where Steve used to live. That's extraordinary. Isn't it? Anyway, if you perhaps live in Tits Avenue, yeah, you know, or um, Wanklin Drive, Wanklin <laughs> Drive, just get in touch. Let yeah. us know. We're not really interested. But it no. might fill up five minutes. Let's play a record. Let's come back with another of Carl's amazing quizzes. If I was your girlfriend by Prince on XFM 104.9. Yeah. Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant, yeah, Carl yeah, yeah. Wilkinson. Big time. We've had quite a few, uh, calls. Greg used to live in a place in South Africa called Arsa Gay. Arsa Gay? Arsa Gay. Nothing yeah. wrong with that. Paul's, uh, friend's parents live in Fart Town just outside <laughs> Leeds. <laughs> Fart Town. Which is nice, isn't it? <laughs> That's just ridiculous. And, uh, Dean, uh, used to live in Butts Farm. Hamworth. Butts Farm. Yeah. That's, uh, yeah, that's, yeah. Uh, obviously. I, I assume they're free range, but sure. and not sort yeah. of battery farm, but that, that'll, yeah, that'll be horrible. But uh, yeah, do you think that that'd be great to just name a town. Wouldn't I it? think if I, yeah, I was thinking if I was a like a multi billionaire, a Bill Gates type figure, I'd yeah. like to buy somewhere like say Manchester, and just rename it. Whinging, mean, like, whinging on the wall. Whinging on the wall. Yeah. Yeah. And um and make them work. We can work Mondays. Exactly. They'd be obliged to to that would have to be what it's called. Yeah. It's the rules. It'd be like mayor. Yeah. It'd oh, great. it'd be great as mayor, wouldn't it? You, well, you want to be mayor of Chinatown, don't you? I'd like to be mayor of Chinatown. It seems to me that there's not a great deal to do. No. Because it's not really a town. No, exactly. But, I've, it's it's just but a who can we talk street. to about that? Who can go and say that, that you've got to stop calling this a town? Because at best it's a novelty street well, with, I... some, with some slippy pavements yeah. near restaurants. I, uh, I actually got stopped the other day by two tourists who said, do you know the way to Chinatown? And I really wanted to say to them, it's a disappointment. It's not a town. <laughs> Seriously, it's not worth it. Pop in, pop in a record shop. Do something else. Yeah. Pop in Garfunkel's. <laughs> <laughs> have some delicious sausage and mash. But you'll get to Chinatown, you'll get, this is not a town. Yeah. Yeah. Well, have you, uh, have you got a town hall? Mm, got not a betting really. shop? <laughs> yeah. Not really a town. I don't think you can build a town entirely out of restaurants. That's <laughs> 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 not enough. You need more stuff. Oh dear. Uh, a lot of old people I've noticed there, Carl. Aren't there? Let's leave that, eh? What? We'll leave it. Leave what? the old- Leave uh, what? Just got to John. Who just emailed and he said my secondary school was, my secondary school was on a street simply called Bell End. <laughs> Bell End, really? Yep. Oh, that's, that's great. great. Um, there's uh, a road in Cricklewood somewhere called Clitterhouse Drive. <laughs> Clitterhouse. Yeah, I don't think you can really get that. You can't get them on that. That's fine. No, that's fine. Um, no, that guy's just having a laugh, just taking the mick, get a lot of that sort of thing. There's a place in America, apparently. Ben's emailed this in. There's a place in America called, uh, My Anus. My Anus? Yeah. I think I've heard that. Yeah. Yeah. My Anus, yes, I have heard of that. That's, that's, that's unlucky. Oh, uh, yeah, that is unfortunate. Where do you live, My <laughs> Where do you live, My <laughs> Anus? <laughs> I've, I've, got, I've got a letter for you. Where shall I... <laughs> Where shall I send, send this thing? <laughs> <laughs> All right, don't get cheeky. <laughs> anyway, just rather than reading out the A to Z, right? Mm -hmm. Are we doing Rockbusters on <laughs> Oh! Yeah. Come on then. Right, Listen, this is, this is built, this has got Chris Moyles, the breakfast show, on Radio 1. <laughs> this yeah. sort of stuff. Well, listen, Go on. Uh, have we, have we got a winner, Steve? Did we you have. Know? I'll check that in a minute. Alright, yeah, yeah, right, right, you, you find a, find a good winner. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the Rockbusters clues, the first one was, this Teletubby has got no. mitts. Well, we know no, 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 We've no, done no, that. No. That yeah. was pole ice. Yeah. yeah right? Rubbish. You ruined it. Right, the second one. I'm saving that money to buy condoms. Too easy, Johnny Cash. That was Johnny yeah. Cash. Rubbish. And the third one was w when you're making bread, add a bit of colour for a change and sort of, you know, change the colour of it. Right. Right. That was dye dough. <laughs> <laughs> they got that. <laughs> <laughs> Give us a winner. Well, this is, uh, the reason I've given this person the prizes is, is just because she's from Switzerland. Sure. She's listening in Geneva in Switzerland. So, I mean, good luck to Tina. And she wins those prizes. Who did she want to win the war? I don't know, I don't think she had an opinion. Really? You sure? Yeah. They say that, but I, I reckon, 
I reckon they want you lost to win, really. So? I reckon so. Do you think that was true of all the wars? They were always on our side, really. I'd get her to, uh, I'd get her to just, if she's still there, who did most Swiss people, maybe sort of like over 50, want to win the war? The Swiss war Germany. or the original war? The Second World War. The best war. Yeah, the, the, main, one. the main one. The main one yeah. but, uh, so just, just, uh, just as a poll, in her opinion, uh, so, so ask people over sort of like 50 or 60, right, just quickly do it in the next 10 minutes, who did they really, I say neutral, but who did they really <laughs> want to win? Yeah. Um, <laughs> England. Yeah, we know you were neutral, but yeah, it's but who you got in England, later. Germany. We come up with great games, don't we? Hey. <laughs>
how many times a day does, does he swells it? It's, it depends what time he, you know, what time he gets in. If he gets in about half past twelve, he could get a good three in. But, but I think, you know, I don't, don't really want to talk about. Well done, Billy. Three out of the four. That is, that's the effort. Yeah. Oh, wow. That, that's, uh, that's the best thing you've ever done, Carl. So that's, that's Kez, right? Yeah. <clears throat> Got some good prizes there. Not bad, yeah, good stuff. Question is, how many times did I say Ricky can get, how many, how many head squeezes <laughs> can he get in before the start of the show? Right? So if you were listening properly. <laughs> The answers in there, right? right? And win some, got some good stuff got there. Some DVDs, DVDs in there, uh, some uh, CDs, including some Jimi Hendrix stuff and uh, other odds and ends. Good stuff. Brilliant. Right. And just text in uh, 83 XFM. All right? All right. All right. Merchant Carl Pilkington. Right. We've had loads of entries for the how many times did I squoze his head? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, well, the answer was three, wasn't it? Yeah. And who's the winner, Steve? Let's give it to John. He's emailed in. He's got it right. He said he squoze your head three times. On sure. Average. It's not squoze, is it, Carl? That's incorrect. It's squoze, isn't it? Uh, it depends how you say it. Go uh, on. Squoze. Well, it doesn't really because it's nonsense anyway. It's not a real word, but you squoze my head. Yeah. I will squeeze your head. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Depends yeah. what, what line. You're getting it in. Sure. Tense. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Alright. Okay. Any monkey news? Any educating Ricky? Anything else? Uh, I don't feel that you've earned Monday off yet, because it's just two hours and you only did about five minutes of it. Yeah, but that, that took a bit of time to make. Yeah, that's your own right. fault. Yeah, but I bet you didn't do it Monday. I bet you did it on another day. I had to come in Monday, didn't I? Yeah, I didn't but I bet, but I bet you'll do that on another day, so you're taking the piss even more, so you're doing it when you should be doing other stuff. Right. You've still got Monday off and mm. you've got two hours here. So, you're laughing either way, so don't give me that. So, do you know what I mean? What else you got? Monkey news. Yeah. Well, let's do monkey news. You want to do it now? Yeah. Oh, we may as well have some monkey news. Let's have right. some monkey news. Let's do some monkey news. You made enough noise there, really? You want to? Sorry, but it's. It, uh, sometimes I like to move around, lounge and that, and at the mic. Sure. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um. Well, let's have the jingle. We've not heard it for a while. Oh, chimpanzee! That monkey news, you. F right. Um. I haven't read this through properly, so oh, I thought, oh, oh, no, no, I'm just oh, that. Right. What do you mean you haven't read it through well, properly? Basically, right, it's, it's, um, it's about problems with chat rooms and that, right? A lot of people, it's like the new way of meeting people and that, innit, now, chat rooms. You get on there, you can Right, if you say someone was having a, a <laughs> meeting with someone, they wanted to meet- it. Right, okay. Please don't preempt but, but, it. Right, there is no- there is not an animal in the world that right, can operate matter, and understand. Right, it doesn't matter, I know the story. <laughs> You and said, you said that- Did they get my- I was three months later, she realised, oh, there's a lot of bananas gone from my fridge. <laughs> See, what I want a divorce. This is what annoys Bobo. me. Bobo. <laughs> you- you say that monkeys can do Shakespeare if they- if they're given the time. No! That's Listen, not it! Let's not get into the it's whole Shakespeare monkeys. It's a philosophical conundrum. Please, right. let's not get into that debate again. We'll it's about the- it's about- uh, Yeah, yeah, yeah. Alright, so this one- this one then. Oh. So this chat room, right? And the thing is, with chat rooms, uh, you have like a big boss who's looking over it and making sure nothing dodgy is going on. Right. Right, so certain keywords come up and- Who's that, Dr. Zayas? <laughs> right. So anyway, they were- they were looking over it, trying to look for- for dodgy stuff, but they kept coming over like, really strange things, like, instead of saying, do you want to meet in a restaurant or a bar? Right, it'd be like- Do you want to meet in a tree? What tree do you want to meet? Right, right? okay. <laughs> Are you sure enough? That's the end, yeah. I'll see you later, mate. I'm just gonna listen to the end of it anyway. It's, you're an idiot. You're an idiot if you believe that shit, honestly. No, I'm just- I'm just telling you let's, what's- let's, what's online. Let's- let's- let's well, hear the rest uh, of it. Well, how- you- you are- you're nearly- you're- you're ill. You're nearly- you- you- Okay, right. well, I don't have the PC term for this, so I really apologise. You're nearly retarded in some aspects. <laughs> um, yeah. instead of sort of saying where something's sexy, they'd say, make sure you bring plenty of bananas. Right, you're like talking that. absolute- Okay. Are you making up the monkey news now because you can't find it anymore? And instead of saying, should we get married, they're saying, how swollen and red is your arse? <laughs> you you know stupid what? fool. Do you know that was me? <laughs> <laughs> Mark Ronson and Ooh Wee on XFM. Well, what a great show. Mm -hmm. We've had- Informative. It's been fun. 
Uh, yeah, we've learnt some, haven't we? Yeah. What have we learnt? Well, well, we've, well, we've learnt that Carl is an idiot. Yes. That he believes that monkeys can get on the That's more of a confirmation of- It really, yeah, suspected. yeah. We, we always suspect it, but that's, that's I just read uh, a little email, um, from someone who just said that in, t in Northern Ireland there is a town called Muff. Is there? Yeah. It's worth knowing. <laughs> yeah. Um, what else do we learn? Uh, Monkey News, uh, um, no one's got anything like Monkey no. News on radio. Okay. No. <laughs> Think of that as a boast. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. No one has got anything like this gout. Yeah. You, you call that a boil? <laughs> look at that and look where it is. Yeah, exactly. Brilliant. We've okay. not uh, heard sadly back from that woman, um, from Switzerland. Haven't we? I know you threw out a question. Yeah, I just, I just thought I wanted to find out whether the, the Swiss really, well, I say they're neutral, but I, I would assume they'd be rooting for us and keeping quiet. You'd hope so. Whenever Germans went through, I went, oh yeah, well, yeah, whoever wins, yeah, but they're going, oh. <laughs> exactly. Whereas with us, they go, alright lads, alright lads, you want some chocolate? Yeah. Here's a cooker cock. No, don't let it go off, I'm hiding. Yeah. Know yeah. what I mean? Sure, sure, But, sure. uh, they better, they better want a, a, us to win, cause it wasn't for us, and we'd have let fascism go in there and, uh, they'd be speaking bloody German and Italian all over the place, wouldn't they? <laughs> <laughs> I think they do. Huh? I think they do. But they do speak German and Italian. Why? Why? I don't know. They just couldn't be bothered to come up with their own language, and they chose that one, I suppose. Well, they chose those. What's the point of being foreign if you don't speak English? I've no idea. I, you'd have to ask them. That's mental. I don't know. What would I do if I went there? You, well, you wouldn't. Why would you go? They don't speak the language. If you're gonna have to choose a language to speak, choose English. English. Even the Dutch, they got their own language, but they don't speak they English. Can't be sound, with well, it. it sounds silly. Yeah. So they speak English. Of course they do. You see, two Dutch people, yeah. so in Amsterdam, um, with clogs on, they'd be they'd be chatting. Chatting in English. In English. Yeah. I'm proud of it. Yeah. Oh, God. There was a- I was there once and there was a- there was a mouse. Right. <laughs> just there on the stair. <laughs> right. it, it was a little mouse with clogs on. Yeah. Where? Hmm. Was it, on there. <laughs> on, on the stair. stair yeah. Oh. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, that's languages. We learned about languages, didn't we? I'm not a linguist, but I pretty much think that's what happens. <laughs> yeah. So you something I learned in the week. Go on. Yeah. Um, this will be one thing. He did definitely learn only one thing this week. It's a good one, though. Don't insult Suzanne's hair. I learned two things Go right, on. this week. <laughs> yeah. Right. Um, don't put your trousers nah. on over your head. Because <laughs> I know you're a person yeah. with that for a while. Mercury may look nice, but bad <laughs> for you. Go on. Um, there are more moves on a chessboard than particles in the universe. That puts you off learning it, doesn't it? Well, no, it's a possibility. No, no, they it's said it is. It is. He mm. said that. That's. Yes, that's right. It's a possibility because it's it's basically that it turns towards infinity because no two games are the same. So it's not that you've got to learn that many moves. Uh, it's not like I don't wish to criticise Rick because I know you were trying to inform him. Then it's a good job you're not a teacher because as you gabbled the phrase, it tends towards infinity. Yeah, it kind of came out as. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. Imagine if you're cause imagine if you're one of those kind of foreign <laughs> students who's gone here to study and they you know sometimes they put What's the tape they put the tape recorder by the uh, yeah. by the lecturer. Yeah. Listen back to that really. <laughs> it, it's something towards infinity, I'm not sure. It tends towards infinity. <laughs> it's talking about tense. <laughs> I yeah. not understand. Cuckoo. So, uh, yeah, we've all- We've, we've all had a good there. time. We've all had a good few We've lives. had a great time. Can I just say to everyone, have a great Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, see you, you later. Like, you, like, you like the Thorns, you played the Thorns. Love the thorns I think you enjoy this, is an old track from Hawksley Workman. Brilliant. Bad name, good song. See you next week. A retro cut there, Thin Lizzy. <laughs> Don't believe a word. On XFM 104.9, I'm Ricky Gervais, with me Steve Merchant. Bubba doo boo, <laughs> who's that over there? It's Carly Pilk Boys. <laughs> you alright, Carl? Oh, that's How are you doing? Yeah, I'm alright, yeah. Yeah, come on, up, 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 bigga bagga doo. Up, 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 yeah? Project, project. There's people out there wanting to, you know, cheer up their Saturday afternoon. We're the boys for it, yeah? We're like quick, quick fitters. <laughs> Yeah. Come on. All right, Carl? Yeah, yeah. Come on! Come, come on. on! I'm all right, I'm up for it. That's it, this is the height of excitement. <laughs> this is it, is it? That's this how is you, you when you're hey, This is you off your head, is it? High on life. <laughs> Christ. <laughs> what did Suzanne say about you saying about a big ass? Uh, Go on. She heard about it. Should we recap yeah? what happened last week? Well, the week before, he, he uh, said that um, her haircut looked like Dave Hill from Slade. <laughs> she didn't like that. So, that's what I said to a bit grumpy, he went, yeah, I didn't mention her fat ass. <laughs> Still thinking that she she would never hear about this. Yeah. What happened when you went home? Um, she heard about that off a mate. Yeah. And we sorted it out. Didn't have to buy her anything. I just, just sort of said, come on, you know, what the show's about and that. Stop yeah. moaning. Yeah. Right. That was alright until about Thursday. 
when I was reading about, uh, do you know, like they say, there's, there's like two worlds and that, and uh, whatever I'm doing now here, there's another one of me doing the same. Yeah. But, well, no, but, he's probably taking some time off. <laughs> he's probably having a week off. Yeah. But, Go on. but I was just talking about that, and she was saying, nah, that, that doesn't happen. And I sort of said, well, they definitely won't have a haircut like yours. <laughs> right? So and again. That, that sort of started the, yeah. the argument again. It's almost like you haven't learned your lesson. Also, it's like you're talking about it again on air almost, <laughs> in a way, <laughs> so it makes clear again. It's well, very short. You know, you know, Carl. If there was a, uh, if I cut a hole in a in a box and you knew there was an orange in there, right, and you put your hand in, would you be stuck there trying to get that orange out? Do you think, or would you just like let it go and sort of tip it upside down to get it out? What do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> I think that answers your question. <laughs> Is that a cardboard box on your hand? <laughs> <laughs> So is there any other things you want to criticise Suzanne for while we're on air? Anything else, anything that's been niggling that you feel you should get off your chest? Uh The hair, the arse. Nah. Leave no, it. Everything leave else it. is yeah, fine. Leave it. leave it. I think so. Okay. Uh, that's good. good. I think leave it. Well, well done. Now can we just check what uh, other big car features have we got today? We got uh, Monkey News. Got Monkey News that's coming important. on. Yeah. yeah. Got a bit of, uh, got Rockbusters. Uh -huh. And uh, the film thing. That, uh, <laughs> still not got a name. <laughs> yeah. The film thing. Just, just me and a film and that. Mm -hmm. And, yeah. uh, Brilliant. this week we're digging out the old, uh, the one, when I'm in One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. Right, so you're gonna make Jack Nicholson. Nicholson. Brilliant film. Yeah. Yeah, brilliant film. It was my favourite film till I saw Godfather. It's better than that. Well, you know, yeah, some would say that, yeah. No, it is. The, the storyline's more interesting than I that. I didn't know there was an actual answer. I didn't, <laughs> so, sorry, it's what's best? One floor of the cuckoo. Is it? Yeah, okay. Oh, Rick. oh, right. Okay. Where's, where's Godfather? Because I want to know, because I don't embarrass myself. Or uh, is it my fourth favourite film or something or? Probably about fifth. In my fifth favourite film, is it? Brilliant. Talking of lists. I suppose Rick. I like Kez and the Elephant Man, do I? Do you? <laughs> <laughs> lists, yeah. Rick. I don't know if you saw the paper. I think it's on TV this evening. It's, uh, as voted for by viewers of VH1, yeah. the music channel. Yeah. And they've basically come up with a list of the greatest pop culture icons. Uh, ever. Uh, there's a hundred. Where's central. Elvis? So Elvis, is, for instance, is number three. Jimmy Dean in there? James Dean is in there. I think he's a bit lower. Uh, let me see. He's, uh, number twenty-two. Twenty-two. We got David Beckham at number one. Oh, well, okay, well then, so, Robbie Williams is in there, so, so it's, it's British bias. Yeah, Robbie Williams is number nine. He's just, uh, just a below ABBA. Oh, number okay. Eight. But, mm -hmm. um, interestingly, this is of interest to you, I think, number sixty-six. Yeah. The Office. That's all right. Well, uh, it is, Rick. It's nice that the show is in there, and that. yeah. that's a very flattering thing. I'll tell you what cheapens it. I'll tell you what undermines it. Yeah. The things that are lower in the list than the show. Oh, God. So we've beaten... Well, uh, I'm going to give you a little test. Yeah. Higher or lower? Do you think this is higher, near the top of most important pop culture icons, or lower than ours? Okay, I'm going to give you, uh, Superman. Well... Uh, international, been around since the 30s, one of the mm -hmm. biggest icons on the planet. Mm -hmm. I'll say higher. Lower. But, yeah. Ludicrous. <laughs> okay. Do you think higher so. or lower? <laughs> Neil Armstrong, the first man <laughs> on the moon. <laughs> this guy's been to the moon. <laughs> well, I'd say, uh, I'd say lower then. Lower? Well, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, but I'm, is, is that saying the people behind the rocket or just him? <laughs> Because he just sat in it, didn't he? He just sat there, yeah. he didn't do anything. But, no, but, but it's, it's the icon. It's what he's symbolic it's not, of. It's, yeah, it's not what, how much work went into it. Alright. Uh, a few others. What about things like Coca-Cola? Oh, no, they don't really count. It tends to be... Uh, oh, so it's not... They don't feature. I mean, Mickey Mouse is in there. Um, mm. what do you make... What do you reckon, Tom Cruise, higher or lower? Tom Cruise is the number one box office movie star in the world. <laughs> well, presumably lower, He's then. lower. He's number 81. <laughs> yeah. Just about scraped in there. Uh, it really is a list drawn up by people who've just sat at home and looked along their video and book collection. Yeah. Um, office, well, yeah, that's good. Well, I think it is a reflection of that, but it's, it's always the same that they, um, you do an HMV poll and it's Pet Sounds, uh, Revolver, Let's Get It On, yeah. Robbie Williams, Life Through a Lens. <laughs> exactly. Because it's, it's, you know, it's the people that vote, it's a reflection of, like, those massive, you yeah. know, what's big at the moment. I was the most powerful man in comedy, let's not forget. Yes. One year ago. Yeah. Wonder where I'll be this year. See, if that had been the laziest man in comedy, <laughs> yeah, yeah. you'd have got my vote. <laughs> yeah. Interestingly though, at number 26, Carl Filkington. <laughs>
<laughs> oh, imagine. Oh. All possibilities. Badly drawn boy on XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais with me, Steve Merchant, and little Carly Pilcoids. <laughs> Rick, um, Susie's emailed. Yeah. She wondered if you could give a massive hello to, mm. uh, Hannah and Charlotte and all in the sixth form at Cobthorpe School. Yeah, yeah. She's on to listen. Would you give them a massive yeah, hello? Yeah, shout out, shout out. Yeah, yeah no massive. Respect, man. Where are they from? Uh, I don't know, I can't quite pronounce it. Cobthorpe School? Cobthorpe Massive. Yeah. They're probably Cobthorpe known massive, as. Yeah. yeah. So good luck to Sue's and Hans and Charles. When did we, when did we start doing dedications? I feel we should, because I've always felt there's just something that's lacking on the show. Interaction with the audience, you know? Interesting only to the one person whose yeah, name's of course, mentioned. Of course. But that's, yeah. how, that's how proper DJs fill out their time. They don't talk about monkeys and, you know, and all that kind of drivel. Oh. Do you think monkeys are drivel, Carl? Well, 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 we'll still be doing a bit of monkey news. So don't yeah, know how, yeah. how much you have a pop at it. It's coming up in a bit. Yeah. Got some good stuff this week. Yeah, I, know, I know it's been a bit dull. Yeah. Last two weeks. Well, know. no, it's not been dull. It's been totally untrue. As ever. Bordering what? on the impossible. I mean, monkey dating, saying what tree are we meeting in? Mm, no. You believe that sort of drivel. Mm. So, I mean, oh, oh, God. Jonathan Ross told a story about a chimpanzee once. Go on. It was about, <laughs> but it was about how it escaped from the zoo yeah. and it jumped on a bus. Right. Okay. Interesting. Funny. I right? did that one. But it possible is there possibility in that yeah, one but being I did true? That. I did that one. I think you said something like he drove the bus or he was conducting it. Or I think fares. you said he took it to Spain. Hmm. <laughs> Do you see the difference? <laughs> it's that little stretch of credibility that means it's all shite. How is Jonathan Ross? All right. <laughs> <laughs> is it? I wonder how long it take before his name popped up. How is he? How is the old man? Oh. Looking forward to his birthday Monday? Oh dear. Yeah. I don't know if any of the listeners uh, oh. saw Ricky on Jonathan Ross's TV show last night. Yeah. What? Oh, I mean, man alive. What? Well, that's not an interview. How is that an interview? What? It's not, he wasn't interviewing you, it's like two pals just having a laugh. And if we ha it was like it was a family do, <laughs> and you just happened to film it and stick it on the telly. <laughs> My friend made a good point, it was like any minute his kids were gonna pop out, sit on that sofa next to you and go, Oh, Uncle Ricky, do, do the little dance. <laughs> <laughs> it was unbelievable, I mean, what were you wearing for a start? <laughs> What's that? Some tatty old jumping like you've just been doing some r texting and you've gone pot round with it, we're having a couple of drinks. That's, that was Lambretta. Lambretta. Was it trendy. inside out? Trendy jumper. How, how do you keep that. getting things with the St. George Cross on it? That, what do you mean? I've, that's the only one I've you've got. You've got loads of stuff. T-shirts, jumper, shoes. No, I've got a union Underpants. jacket. Um, uh, 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 what's it? A French connection one? But that's one. not the, that's not my underpants. concern. Underpants, I haven't got any underpants. That's not my concern, no, it's but, just the fact that, I mean, firstly. Yeah. The fact that Ricky, for those of you who don't realise, Ricky is friends with Jonathan Ross. They are friends. Now, they've only known each other, what, a year maybe? About two, yeah. It's less, I think it's less than two. And what worries me is, you're, the friendship's too close. <laughs> what do you because mean? Because you're, you're over 40. You see, it seems to me that after the age of 25, <laughs> men should not be becoming really close friends with other men. It should be like you've had all your friends, you made them at university or school. And if you were in a way walk of life and you met someone at a party or a pub, even if you got on, you would not be phoning them every other day, like going to an awards day. What are you wearing, Jonathan? I've heard this conversation. What are you wearing? I think I might wear this. Is it too formal? Is that going to be too formal? It's not true. It is. That's you're always true. on the phone to him. You're always chatting. I'm just going to pop around. Oh, I'm just going to play some tennis. But yeah, we play tennis. Always hanging out with the guy. And it's, it's to me, it's unhealthy. And this... It's just bled over now onto oh, TV. I, oh, hold on, so, wait a minute, wait whoa, a minute. Whoa, whoa, whoa. So, you're there, it's like, I'll tell you what it reminded me of, Des O'Connor and Jethro. <laughs> coming on to <laughs> plug his live video. Uh, or Tommy and Kenny Lynch. And then at the end of the interview, after yeah. they've been, you know, mutually yeah. backslapping. Yeah. He, he gave you a pet. <laughs> <laughs> Jonathan Ross gave you a cat <laughs> as a replacement for your cat which died. Yeah. Now to me, that's, a, that's an inappropriate gift. Why? It's a lovely gift. It's it's a lo the, you should be, I don't think people should be giving pets do you know as what, gifts. Do you know what I've got in there for his birthday? Imagine up to a wedding with, <laughs> I just bought you a cat. Oh, do you know what I've got in for his birthday? I, I was asking, I've got him a child. 
Well, you may as well, because that's what it's like, a cat to me. I've got a small Rwandan child. A cat to me is like, I've, I've bought you this small child. <laughs> I was gonna sponsor him, but I got a bit of cash, I've flown him over. <laughs> it it's was too, a it's gen- too intimate, it's like, it's too I much think? responsibility. Do you know what I think, Carl? Go on. I think Steve's a bit jealous. I'll tell you, I've got good reason to be jealous. What? I've got good reason to be jealous, I've just remembered this. Your birthday? Yeah. Jonathan Ross was there. Carl Pilkington was there. Yeah. I don't remember being invited. <laughs> I don't remember being invited. Was I there? Carl, you were there. I don't remember being yeah, there. Yeah, but you're with him all day and that. Right, so. okay, well, yeah, but he sees you a lot. I mean, Jonathan, he's on, he's round his house every other day playing tennis and who else knows what, swimming together and sat in his jacuzzi, <laughs> cracking wise. What happened there? <laughs> what happened there? <laughs> oh, we've got to the bottom of it. Play a record. The villa that we went to afterwards yeah. could only sleep six. It may as well have been. <laughs> <laughs> How is the cat? All right. Yeah, okay. Okay, what have you named it? Jonathan? Ollie. Hey ya! Outcast, XFM, 104.9, Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington. It's that time, isn't it? <laughs> Rockbusters. Three. Come on, Carl, what you got for us? Alright, well, do you want to, uh, you want to say what the prizes are? Yeah, the prizes are better away than that. Really? Um, we've got, I'll uh, be the judge of that. Actually, um, what am I talking about? No, there's a two disc set, Rock and Roll Legends, on the cover there. We've got Buddy Holly, Elvis, Roy Orbison, and, mm. uh, Little Richard. So no that's... one wants that, baby. <laughs> Nobody's interested. Nick Cave and the Bad Seeds, a DVD. I'm a Nick Cave fan and I wouldn't watch it. No, you'd watch it once yeah, at most best. when there was nothing else. Knowing me knowing you. No, 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 I mean, Nick Cave's good, but when do you watch Rock exactly. with DVDs, oh, yeah. yeah. Knowing me knowing you, great series obviously, but once VHS. again, on VHS. Who wants it on VHS? Where, yeah. where are all the bonus features? R- r- absolute pointless The only so thing far. that's half decent is this enormous hardback League of Gentlemen book, which is the scripts and all sorts of other stuff. If you're a League of Gentlemen fan, you'll love it. If you're not, I guess it's a good if, Christmas if gift. If you're not a League of Gentlemen, there's nothing in this for you. <laughs> no, exactly. So. <laughs> So, you know, you okay, can either enter the hell of it. A pile of rubbish. What's the story? Well, not as bad as the competition, I suppose, so... No. Go right, on. Well, you, you know how it works, cryptic clues. It's not really cryptic, it's no. usually wrong. It <laughs> kind of is. Yeah. <laughs> um, right, so the first one, there's three of them, you get them right, you win the stuff. First yeah. one, uh... I'll get them close, I mean, cos <laughs> you could win this if you got one right, possibly. If you go to Cheps, though, you will. Was that a clue, or is that a point? Is that something that's, to do? That's a clue. Right. right. Say right. it again. If you go to Chepstow, you will. And what are the initials? Just S. Just S. Right. Second one, um, E.T. is upset. What's up with him? <laughs> <laughs> Alright. E.T. is upset. What, what, what's he upset for? What's wrong with him? All right. Different. <laughs> so not cryptic, so M-E, go on. M.E. The initials there. N.E.? M. M.E. M for mother. M.E. Alright. And the third one, um, I had a, I had a tape with, uh... Jesus. <laughs> imagine right Bob, down, imagine Bob. Bob, Hull, Bob Holness doing this against, in the gold run, against the clock. Right, uh, <laughs> oh, I had a tape, no, I had a tape with some, uh... <laughs> I had a, oh, listen, I had a tape with, like, yeah. Umpty Dumpty on it, uh, <laughs> and, yeah. and Ickery Dickery Dock and that on yeah. it, but I broke it, alright? Um... Constantly listening it to trying to figure them out. <laughs> <laughs> trying to solve the crime. Exactly. Who pushed Humpty? Yeah. Yeah. The initials there, B R. Right? So, first one, if you go to Cheps though, you will. The initial there, uh, S. E.T.'s, uh, E.T.'s upset. What's up with him? Yeah. Right? Yeah. What's up with E.T.? I don't know. What's up with E.T.? E.T.'s upset. What's up with E.T.? <laughs> yeah. The initials there, M E. Is that yeah. right? Yeah. Hey, yeah. Let's, let's, let's go through that one more time. Yeah. If you go to Chepstow, They're you like might. They're like jazz right? questions. Yeah, exactly. It's just just free for. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. E T S a bit upset. What's <laughs> gay? What's that? Ca- what? Hey, dude. What's the matter, man? <laughs> and they had a tape with like Umpty Dumpty on it, Ickery Dickery Dock stuff yeah. like that. Doesn't work anymore. What's What's gone on there? Right? <laughs> what's gone on there? B R. First time we said, well, you broke it. Well, I, bro- I broke it then. Yeah. Is that Doesn't important matter. or not? Yeah. <laughs> I broke it. And this is B? B R. Okay. Right. Okay, well you can text if you have a uh, mobile phone to everyone. There's no excuse to not take part. 83XFM is the text. 83XFM. Or the phone number. No, not the phone, obviously. We I think I know what the B might stand for. Um. <laughs> and, uh, otherwise it's, uh, ricky.gervais <laughs> at xfm.co.uk. <laughs> no. uh, We'd love uh, to hear from you. 
Oh, it just sucks the life out of me, does, rock, rock, just listening to Rockbusters. Something to bring you down even further, although it's a beautiful, beautiful tune. Oh, beautiful. Uh, Ryan Adams has got a number of different albums out at the moment. One is called Rock and Roll. It's not great, don't really bother with that one. Do dig out, though, Love is Hell Part 1 from Ryan Adams. It's available uh, at different places, and you'll find this on it. Track 5, Wonderwall, his version of Oasis. It's absolutely is beautiful, isn't it? It's a treat. It's XFM 104.9. Yeah. Fortune Faded Red Hot Chili Peppers on XFM 104.9. You, oh. of course, um, don't ever take the tube anywhere, Rick. No. You haven't done that for years. No. Um, take cars everywhere or you walk. Yeah. Or you get a lift from Jonathan. Um, but me, I'm still forced to take the tube, which is also very embarrassing at the moment because those posters. You're not forced to take the tube, are you? I am. What do you mean you're what, forced What, am I made of money? <laughs> <laughs> well, you could How walk. How else am I going to get a bank? You could walk. Well, you, can, you can drive, won't you buy a car? Oh yeah, driving into the centre of town? Congestion charge, are you paying that, are you a fiver? <laughs> hey? What do you think of that, Carl? <laughs> hey? Um, <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> oh yeah, cos he's Mr, uh, flush, he's Mr lavish with his cash. No, Carl, I've, I've, I've moved in close, I know, I'm not moaning about it, I walk everywhere yeah. now. Well good, yeah. Yeah. I'm pleased for you. Yeah. I'm pleased I'm for you. about it, but then I sorted it out. But you're yeah. always whinging anyway, let's not get on to you, Carl, it's mm, always you and you. Yeah. So, um, what's up with Steve today, do you think, Carl? I don't know, what's going on? He's having a go, isn't he? Yeah. He's not yeah. helping those posters being on the tube of us. <laughs> <laughs> That's not helping. I don't know if you've seen those posters. You obviously don't go to the tube. I saw the, saw the, yeah. I haven't seen like, on the tube, but. Everywhere I go, I'm stood next to one. I can't avoid it. Yeah. I'm on the tube waiting. I look around and I go, oh, it's, it's us again. And it's so embarrassing. Well, cause I, it makes, because it looks like you're stood next to it deliberately. But I can't browse in HMV now. I went yeah. last week and uh, you keep coming up to pictures or cardboard cutouts of yeah. Brent. Right? Yeah, yeah. And uh, I was in a bookshop and I was looking at, there's a big almanac of comedy. Right, and I was just looking through it, just browsing, right, killing time, and there was a picture of me, and just as I started looking at this right up at the office, a tap on the shoulder, it was one of the worst there, said, do you mind signing some script books? Mm. So she saw me looking at myself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was, I wanted to go, you know, I just, you know, I just turned to that page then. Yeah, I was in a bookshop looking, there was a big book on uh, sit sitcoms, it was like the A to Z of sitcoms or something like that, and I genuinely was looking up other shows, because um, it was about other yeah, comedy so, shows, well, yeah. and I was looking something up, guy that I knew came up to me, like that, Oh, and I decided, like, oh, I'm just looking, oh, Robin's Nest, where's that? Yeah. Birds of a feather, I just got to Cos it's so, it's like, I'm interested in comedy before yeah. the fact I got in comedy, so I'm well, going to book on comedy. Exactly, yeah. But on the tube, it's really awkward because it's like, um, it, it's, everywhere I walk, they're kind of round the corner, so you don't sort of expect them, and then I'm sort of running now from kind of corridor to corridor, pillar to pillar, <laughs> to avoid being stood next to this picture, yeah. in case I look like someone who stands next to this picture, trying to get recognised. <laughs> Imagine that! Um, oh, of course Carl didn't want his little round bald head no. on that. Yeah. Uh. But, um, I was on the tube today and, um, <laughs> you know, you sometimes you can't help but overhear a conversation. Yeah. And, uh, this one woman, there were two friends, they were sat there, and one woman said, um, she just said, uh, oh, I must tell you this, I must tell you this. <laughs> I was in the pub last night and, uh, Dave called. And I said, Dave, he said, I can't hear you. I said, Dave, it's not, I said, he said, I can't hear you. So I held the phone up so he could hear all the noise in the pub. Ugh. That was it. That was the anecdote. <laughs> <laughs> that was the story. And I wanted to lean over to her friend and say, unless this woman has given you a kidney or saved you from drowning, yeah. do not be friends with her. Break up this friendship. She hasn't got anecdotes. Because what's that? And I've, I've got acquaintances like that where you know you, sp you speak to me, you get cornered at a party, you know this is the person who has not got anecdotes. <laughs> yeah. The anecdotes, they're not stories. <laughs> yeah, they just, yeah. That's it. It's like you're expecting for something else to happen. Uh, Never yeah. does. Well, I was um, with uh, Danny Baker yesterday. Oh, yeah. Uh, he's a brilliant bloke. Oh, God, first time I met him, and we got on like a house on fire. Put your num oh. his number straight in your mobile. Well, we've exchanged numbers because yeah. he's got some great anecdotes. You had to delete mine because no, you know, you've got I, so I many. Might, I might write with him because he's, he's funny. He did sure. this thing and it was absolutely brilliant. He's yeah. doing a, uh, he wrote a, uh, a documentary and uh, he's a great guy. He's, a f he's funny as well, you know show what I mean? It's this, I'll tell you what it is, it's the <laughs> showbiz friendship. That's what I loathe, I think. It's the fact that like somehow, 
you're sort of you, because it's like you haven't got to go through the formalities <laughs> of making friends with someone because they oh well I respect your work you respect mine you know I'm a funny guy you've seen my work yeah. let's be friends yeah, yeah. of course yeah. and it's like and it just it's a horrible kind of icky sort of listen Steve me and you are going to stay in touch whatever <laughs> so I mean not and probably not my birthday this year but next year sure we'd have known each other what seven eight years yeah so come to that one yeah 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 uh, well can I that's do I need what? to wear the waiter's outfit again? <laughs> <laughs> oh, God! Oh, dear. P-I-M-P, by 50 Cent, or 50 Cent, as I call in. XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais, you're Steve Merchant, and there's little Carl Pilkingbod over there. All right? All right. Yeah, yeah not bad, not bad. Listen, um... Oh, he's perked up. Yeah. Oh, he's back in the area. Well, you got something to no, say? I just, just, I was kept quiet in the first hour. I'll let you get on with it. No, what you got to say? Is it, just to have a guess, is it about monkeys, Chinese people, or little gay fellas? It's about, it's about little gay fellas. Sure. Is it? Of course yeah. it is. Go on. Yeah, but not because I, I Sorry, actually didn't make a tally, didn't we just note that, don't yeah. you? Yeah. No, no, but it fascinates me, doesn't it? All stuff like that, that's a bit, that's sort of different. Yeah. Yeah. Than that. What, you were like, showing me like monkeys and Chinese people? Well, it... and... That thing you were showing me before, the half woman. No, half. you weren't. In, you weren't impressed with that. Well, no. You know, that woman be. that's got two uh, pieces of uh, genetic makeup in her, where it was two, um, two separate sperms and two um, separate eggs um, fused, and she came out as sort of a, a normal person, but she had this residue of genetic material, yeah. and so she's had two children that aren't genetically the same as her. Yeah. Right? And they showed it in the paper by doing her half white and half black to show the two different, you know what I mean? Just for yeah. it, he went, it, does she look like that? I said, of course not. He went, not interested then. Of course. Yeah. If, he said, how could I tell? Not interested <laughs> in that at all. Yeah. If I'd have said she'd given birth to a monkey, mm. fascinated, <laughs> yeah. straight away. Well, anyway. Go on. But that's what I'm saying, I'm just interested in weird stuff, right? Yeah. Um, so about, am I. That's why little, you're on the show. Talking about little gay fellas and that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> okay. uh, Northern Line, Beach, Underground Tube thing. Not train. the, not the boy band. Right. right. Yeah. Um, apparently, on a, uh, on a Saturday night, late, I don't know what that is, uh, if, what, what, what time late is in the sort of gay community, as mm. we've discussed before, mm. yeah. but apparently the last carriage on the Northern Line, they all, they all get in there. What do you mean they all get in there? They sort of take over. The last carriage of the Northern Line on a Saturday night, right? And it's like the gay, the gay carriage, right? And what exactly do they do? They just travel about on the Northern Line. No, just have a chat and that, and like uh, just you stick know, on take the communards. How do you How do you know? Someone tell me. See this? I I mean, I'm glad you've informed me because it wouldn't bother me, but I feel I should be told about these things because I'm likely to stumble onto that carriage. Mm. By mistake, and I'm not. It's not that it'd be a problem. It's just I might feel a little uncomfortable if there's a lot of people in, you know, the black, <laughs> the black leather gear and the moustaches, the hats. I mean, to be quite honest, they'd be annoyed. Of course, because they'd be expecting something a little bit, you know. What do you mean? Well, they're good looking, most of them. Sure. <laughs> no, they are good looking fellas, though, aren't they? What do you mean? What do you mean? They're just a, a lot of the gay, you know, they look after themselves and that yeah. and look good. Keep but themselves. Some of them work out, yeah. yeah. You see, this is the, the problem I have because there's a lot of areas in London and elsewhere in the country where there's a sort of, you know, it's a gay thing, you know, it's a gay public toilet, or, or I don't mean it's gay, but it's not like a legal thing. It means a cottage. But it's a cottage, or whatever. I mean, I remember being, um, in Bristol once doing something. If you're confused when I said it's a cottage, yeah. that's a term for where gay people go in toilets to sort of meet and greet each other. Well, I, I, uh. Shake hands. <laughs> I was at uh, the public library in Bristol once doing some studies from a sixth form, mm. and um, I think the toilet was closed in the library. I was dying for the toilet, and I popped out, and there was a public toilet behind the library. I thought, I can't believe my luck. Dashed down there. It was about six ish in the evening. I was working yeah. late. I was studying hard. Yeah. I went in there, and I swear to God, I saw two fellas with the. Is that, is that unusual? Or? Uh, well, no, that they were up to some hijinks. What were what, they sort of like? Do you know what? the thing that struck me? What? One of them had bright red underpants. What do you mean? You saw, what, they were trans- actually doing, you know, they were having some kind of, you know, right. they were having relations. They weren't even in a cubicle, they were out in the- Where, where were the underpants? Well, where around they- his ankles. No! Yes, I swear to God, I'm not gonna make this up! What old were you? I don't know, like, how old you are in the sixth form? Sixteen or whatever? 16? Yeah, and what did you do? Well, I actually well, said- Well, you just joined in, what else did you do? <laughs> you might as well, I yeah. actually swore, I said, oh, F me. 
And then I went, oh, no, <laughs> James. No, I did. I swear to God. I did. I did. <laughs> I went, oh, it's me. No, don't. Because I was panicked. And I ran out. And as I was and as I was walking out, a guy was coming in. I went, oh, hang on, mate. And then I thought, I better not send him. I, I, I'll let him find out for himself. He might be going there to join in. He might have got a call. Come down. We're, having, we're going crazy on each other's ass. <laughs> Come down. It's a conspiracy of Bristol. But what conspiracy. annoyed me, what annoyed oh, me my was, lover. What a bit of <laughs> What angered me, Rick, was, uh, was the fact that I wasn't notified, that there was not, I didn't know. There this was, was no a, sign. And afterwards, I spoke to other people about it, and they said, oh, it's a famous gay haunt. But mm. what annoys me is I feel that they should put an ad in the local press, yeah. a big paper, like once a week, like, you know, when they recall cars if they're damaged or, or there's a fault, or curries might bring back stuff if they're sort of faulty goods, they say recall and we'll give you money back. They what just do you suggest? The gay community should put an advert in that just says, these are the hot spots, this is where you're likely to find us doing some stuff. If you're not gay and you might feel uncomfortable, avoid them. And just list them, or little pictures, or, you know, a map or something. Anything, because like the gay tube thing, I Cop don't know that. one, two, three, railway cuttings. <laughs> Well, not that. It's more of a kind of, it's more of a sort of social awareness thing. Yeah. So people, you know, don't feel uncomfortable and... But they don't want exactly to be like, sort of walking <laughs> under a neon sign. Why? It's, it's legal. <laughs> yeah, yeah, big arrows. <laughs> oh, as if. What do you mean? What's wrong with that? Because, well, it's actually a public place. I don't think, it, I don't think cottaging is well, strictly I legal. But, but they don't even have to specify what they're going to do. But some people, some people, they're not, some of them aren't, I don't think it's probably they seen gays, gay, is why? it? Yeah, but it's not, yeah, but it's not the people that go out and they say I'm gay and I like Barbara Streisand. It's presumably the sort of people that do that are people that either aren't quite out yet or, do you know what I mean? Or they're, they're, they're doing that in a quick way to for their wife and kids. Yeah. I don't know, I don't, I don't know completely how it works, but I'm sure there probably isn't a place like, um, uh, free bumming here tonight. <laughs> no, there is kind of. What? Because I, I was walking home one night through Soho, right? Mm -hmm. Um, just because that's the way I have to go, not because I choose, you know what I mean? I, uh, I wasn't going there for, on that, right? <laughs> so I'm, I'm walking <laughs> no, through, really. right? Cool. And, um, I was handed like a, a card, which was like a gay event, yep. right? Now that's a bit weird, isn't it? That, Straight away he's presuming that because I'm there that time of night. Well, and you've got a shaved head and you sort of like, you know, you sort of like quite look after yourself and you've got some nice clothes. Yeah, but it's still, you, and you, you look like a little bit of rough, don't you, from Manchester? It was you, a, look like, you look like a northern rent boy who comes down what, to well, stand outside McDonald's. But and, the card was rubbish, right? What do you mean? Had this fella on it, yeah. right? All sort of greased up and that. Why would you look? Just having a look. What, what he'd handed me and that. Sure. Right. Just having a look. A uh, picture of him sort of sailors out on tan body, right? Just his arse out, like that. <laughs> and, uh, rubbish slogan, right? The best bum in W1. <laughs> <laughs> is, is bum there a noun or like a verb? What do you mean? Well, to bum. Is it like, get the best bum you've ever had? Or, he had the best bum? I think it's just I don't suppose you asked. No. <laughs> <laughs> I don't suppose you called the number to check. <laughs> what do you mean exactly by this? Does it mean you've got a great arse? Do you I mean I will good? be well bummed, or do you mean oh, you've just oh, got oh, a good- Come on now, let's-, let's Well, just a final point about, cause I asked my friend how it all works up on the Heath, cause I live in Hampstead Heath, yeah. not near Hampstead, and I was where I didn't want to go walk in and get involved, mm. get myself involved in it. <laughs> how awkward. can you get involved? No, but again, I didn't want to walk <laughs> so like, by- So like, oh, I can't believe it, I, I couldn't say no. <laughs> oh, my wrist, it's knackered. What do you mean, what, I was there for about two hours, I must have gone about 43 of them. <laughs> but you know, I didn't like to say no, cause they were just, they were so pleased to see me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh but God. But it's not so much the fear of that. It's not, it's not Good a... skiing practice. I was doing two at a time for a little <laughs> it's while. It's not the fear of that so much <laughs> as the fact that, again, you don't want to gate crash someone else's party. You don't, do you know what I mean? No. You don't, if, so, if, there, if there was a straight couple having sex, you'd want, oh, I'm sorry, and you'd want to avoid that area. You, yeah, you, of course. But I find, so someone told me, and someone told me how, they, how it works, and apparently you just go and you like sit on a bench or something, and yeah. then a guy just sits on the bench and they just look at each other. There's not really anything said. It's just a kind of nice evening or whatever. You know, I guess it's like two in the morning or whatever. And then they go off in the bushes and ding dong. <laughs> but I, it's like I don't know how that culture's developed. This is, this, I love this program. But now. Why can't that be the case with women? <laughs> that would be amazing. You just go out to the park and like one in the morning. You just sit on a bench. You just be like a scene from Gigi. Exactly. Where right. the, yeah, just walking along with a perambulator. Yeah. Uh, exactly. Oh. But that would just be a joy if there was none of this formality. You've got to talk to them, buy them dinner.
Oh, you know? you're joking. Romance. Oh, no. It's this kind of informal thing. It'd so be what, great. So what do you, what would you, what would you do then? You go up to a woman and go, come on. Yeah. Let's, let's stop mucking around. We well, you know there's why a, we're both sat on this bench. There's a, there's a nice, there's a nice bush over there. Yeah. Let's have a bit. Yeah, and then she'd go, yeah, great, thanks. I'm, you know, I'm killing some time before I, you know, pop into town. Yeah. That'd be perfect, thanks. You make my weekend. So you're jealous of gays as well in as me? In a sense. In a way. What do you think, Carl? Let's put a truck on. Why? You get <laughs> scared now. Just, you pulled it up. Is, is, it, you, is it getting too close to the bone, so to speak? <laughs> Radiohead and They're There on XFM. I'm Ricky Gervais, with me Steve Merchant and Carl Pilkington. I was talking to my dad the other day, he was saying, he, he lived in Bristol and my family lived in Bristol and so they can't really listen to the show. And um, he, uh, he said, I was thinking of buying your uh, grandparents a digital radio for Christmas so they can listen to, uh, listen to your show. Imagine them listening to that last link. <laughs> like you. And then me seeing them at Christmas. Steve, you never told us you saw two boats bumming. Yeah, and then what was... What's that about you jacking off 30 men? <laughs> exactly. You've got to say no, lad. <laughs> I know you're a nice fella, but just because they want relief, you're not the man for it. <laughs> oh, oh, dear. dear. You must be so proud. Yeah. Rockbusters. Yeah, there'd be a bit of love in this, all right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, three clues were, uh, first one. If you go to Chepstow, you will, all right? The initial was S. That was C horses, all right? That was the answer there. I'll give you that. That's fair enough. enough. I'll give you that. Um, E.T.'s upset. What's wrong with E.T.? What's, what's, what's wrong with him? Yeah, right. Initials M.E. Yeah. What's up with him? It was Missy Elliot. Alright, Elliot. Doesn't who's, count at all. What? Doesn't count at all. Missy Elliot. You know what I mean? What's up, what's, what's wrong with E.T.? Well, what, what is that with him? Well, no, 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 just let him explain it. Sorry, Carl, do it again. Well, well, I wasn't listening. Do it again. Elliot, yeah. Yeah. Who's in E.T.? Yeah, I'll just do the clue again. Alright. E.T.'s upset. What's yeah. He's looking a bit sad and that. What's, what's what, up with him? What, E.T. the extraterrestrial? Yeah. Yeah, go on. Right, and his mate, yeah, who's in it, it's called Elliot. Yeah, right, he's upset. What's up with him? Well, he's, he's, he's Missy Elliot. Missy Elliot, what's she got to do with it though? I don't understand. No, it, the way you'd say it, it you say, "What's up, E.T.?" and it go, oh, "Missy Elliot." Why missing. would he mention her? I don't understand. Was she? In, was it a thing in the film? Missing. She wasn't even around. Oh, miss, missing. Oh, missing Elliot. Oh no. Oh, that no, that no. makes sense, Carl. No, 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 she's not no, called no, missing no, Elliot. Could this maybe about rock stars, though? Isn't it? Miss, missing Elliot, isn't it? So it's meant to be about rock stars, yeah, isn't it? Though? It's just cryptic, though, isn't it? Cryptic clues. And oh no, that's not cryptic. So that's shit. The... <laughs> you. So I had a third one. Uh, I had a tape, and it had uh, Umpty Dumpty on it, and <laughs> I love when he says Umpty Dumpty. Yeah, Umpty Dumpty. Hickory Dickory Dock and that. Uh, <laughs> yeah. but, but the tapes uh, broke. Yeah. That was B R. Buster Rhymes. Say that again, I'm so sorry. Oh, sorry, I don't understand. What do you mean? Oh, uh, who, who, who's the winner, Steve? No, no, it doesn't, no, do you mean oh, busted? busted? Well, it's kind of like that. <laughs> cryptic. No, no, it's not, no, cryptic doesn't mean change it, so it's not the same. Steve, who's the winner? We've got loads of right answers, so. It's interesting, this email system, weird, it? um, it flashes up suspected spam, if it, you know spam is that stuff yeah, that yeah. gets sent around the internet. Yeah. And it flashes that up if it thinks it's, uh, Gonna be a spam email, and every time it comes in with a rockbusters answer, it just says suspected spam. <laughs> in a sense, <laughs> in a way. Um, let's uh, let's give it to uh, Catherine Jakeways from uh, Hackney. Oh. She's uh, she's got this rubbish, answers. absolute right. rubbish. You know, talking about um, your parents listening. Carl, it was in Heat this week, and uh, they mentioned that he does this thing on Sky. What is it? Uh, it was. This thing with Richard Bacon, some program about watching telly, and you yeah. just talk about what you're watching, mm -hmm. and that. And he was annoyed because he said because his parents are there, and so he's not doing it. He's not going to turn up because they he mentioned it in heat. And so his parents might watch. Yeah. Why are you worried about that? I don't like him watching stuff, do I? I told you it dates back to when I did Little Donkey at school. Sure. I don't want people watching me. <laughs> what is that? Just <laughs> renew us on Little Donkey. What happened? It was just you know I was there to play the drums and that uh, in We Three Kings. Mm -hmm. uh, I was loving it, you know. I got a bit carried away. How old were you? About thirteen. Right? Yeah, really? Probably. Yeah. About ten? No, about ten, probably. Yeah. It? Six. Um, like, between six. Where old were you? What school were you at? 
Uh, <laughs> okay, you were playing Little yeah. Donkey. So, yeah. and, uh, no, 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 no. No, you but it was one of them schools where everyone sort of was in the same one. Do you know what I mean? Oh, a Manchester school. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Just what the one do you mean? Thing. Well, it's like you, what you, sweeping chimneys in the day, and then uh, one hour of learning. <laughs> yeah. What are you talking about? What school were you at? Was it infant, junior, or secondary? They didn't really do that. It was what one way. What do you mean? You do that. that? They still have to abide by the laws of the land in Manchester. No, but it was a, it was a lot more like like you had infants, but yeah. you also had like the older lot. There's kids there. Who, when you're in the younger year and that, you see kids and talk, you go, is that- Talk English and use terms that people do when they're, they're talking about schooling. I don't even want to talk about this. No, how old were you? What, what oh. I'm thinking, I'm guessing maybe six or seven or eight. So you went from thirteen <laughs> to six? Yeah, but like I say, it's hard to remember because- <laughs> Imagine if you were giving evidence <laughs> in a trial. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. I mean, uh, I don't know, I can't really narrow it down other than seven years either way. You know, theoretically, yeah. he could get called up for jury service. <laughs> 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 right, you're on- White Stripes. Hardest button to button on XFM. That's a frightening thought that you came up with before the break. Carl, Carl, jury service. Carl could be responsible for yeah. someone's rest of their life. Yeah. Because jury service, that applies to anyone. Anyone could get sent the form. You're, I think you're obliged to go unless you have a really decent reason not to. Imagine it was a really, really important trial. Well, what annoys me is that isn't it supposed to be you're tried by twelve good men and true? Twelve good, good, good men, men and true. true. Yeah. Good men and true. But, and women, of course. The only thing days. I can hope is that the defence attorney would wheedle out Carl <laughs> at an early stage. Oh yeah, objection. I object. Yeah. Why? I object. Have you heard of something called rock busters? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, sorry, we c you can't just object on that. Um, okay, then what if I tell you my client, standing trial, is a little gay Chinese fella. And here are some of the tapes. <laughs> yeah. From XFM. What, what would you do? He's prejudiced. So how does it work then? How does what work? What do you mean? What you just you get mean? called up and you have to do- you have to do jury service unless you've got a very good reason. And it's not, I normally have Mondays off. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, you wouldn't like oh, that. Oh, yeah, well, you, you have to get there at I've nine o'clock. I've got to prepare monkey news. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you couldn't stand it. Just wouldn't do it. I wouldn't, I wouldn't. What would you say? Say, oh, don't, have, don't get me involved. Because I got involved once. <laughs> don't get me involved! No. What do you mean you got involved once? Well, would the- Police and that, when I lived in Manchester, saw a bit of car crime going on. Right. And I got involved. It hassle. I'm telling you. How did you get involved? You phoned the police? Yeah. Yeah. Because Snitch. I thought, well, I know, <laughs> well that's just it, but I thought I'd hope somebody Grass. did it with my car. Well. Yeah. So, uh, and it was just a hassle. Loads of phone calls. Canary. Having to stand on a balcony of this, you know, tower block that I lived in. Police shouting up at me, I'm stood there with my underpants on. Right. And, and what it was, a car had been robbed, right? Mm -hmm. So I call up this. They, they call up the, uh, the police and that, yeah. right? Said, right, listen, um, car's being robbed. And they said, where is it? I said, I don't know, just across the road from where I live, right? So I tell them where I live. And where go, do you live? How old are you? 13? So she's, she's asking loads of questions and that. I'm saying, mm. look, whilst you're asking all this, they're actually getting away, so, you know, we'll leave it. And she's like, no, uh, we'll track it down, blah, blah, blah. So I said, well, look, I, I work nights. What could you see? You could see some could lads, see some lads just pushing, pushing a car. Pushing a car. Yeah. Did, did that's how they steal cars in Manchester, is it? Yeah. Everywhere else in the country they're getting in, they're driving them away. In the south, we, yeah, they drive them away. <laughs> exactly. You sort of like, in start Manchester. the engine. You get away a lot faster. <laughs> <laughs> what, the, what do the police do? Push their panda car after them. <laughs> exactly. They say, come on lads, don't cheat, don't get in the car. <laughs> exactly. They're just pushing it. It was late at night and that. And oh, okay. You don't want to start the engine. You don't want to wear people up. Not when you're nicking cars. Push it out. Alright. So, no. no. So, when it, uh, late at night. Hold on, they weren't gay. They weren't gay, were they? They what, what, they what, 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 <laughs> they're out late, really. Come on, Carl, so what happened? So, anyway, so look, don't call me back, I'm going out of bed, <laughs> right, I've got work in a bit. Brilliant. So, um. Let's go, what? So Let's that go. was that, right? Where are you working? Next thing, right, phone's going, uh, hello, it's the police again, I said, oh, I told you not to call me. Right? <laughs> I told so you not to said, call me at home. So, um, they said, right, the police are outside, can you go on your balcony? It's like, oh. So I'm ten stories up, yeah. right? Uh, stood on the balcony with, with, like, me underpants on. Yeah. Right? And the police are saying, where's the car? And I'm saying, I don't know, they've gone down that road now. So I'm trying to point to them. They're shouting up, saying which road and all that. And I just thought, why did they get involved? Yeah. I don't think they found it. No. It was hassle. They, well, the, you know the I mean? blokes were pushing it too fast. <laughs> exactly. They were, by, they were in the next street by now, weren't well, they? this is, this, don't get involved. Don't get involved. After um, that, I'd, imagine him being on a, some sort of trial where it's like, uh, some sort of mob. 
affair. Yeah, gangland Imag murder. Imagine him going into the witness protection. <laughs> the police just explaining to him, your new name is Jeffrey Peters. Why can't I be called Bruce Wayne? Well, no. Mr. Pilkington, listen. Imagine that. Do you know what the- do you know what witness protection is? Oh, go on. <laughs> Amazing. Look, it's when- supposing you were to give evidence against the Mafia, right? You've done a job for them and you had to give evidence against them, right? Cause right, well if you're gonna do- I mean, all I did was a two kids nicking a car. Yeah. Don't start messing with Mafia. No. Th listen. Of course not, no. But let's imagine- imagine you're in the Mafia, and uh, that, that you got caught doing something, but instead of going to prison for the rest of your life, you said, oh well I can- I can give you Mr. Big, yeah? So I go, okay, give us Mr. Big and we'll let you off, right? So the police go, right, okay. I got handed this leaflet in Soho. <laughs> 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 so you say, okay, well I'll give you names, they go, right, you get evidence in court and you go, yeah. They go, right, we'll have to get your way because you'll, you'll be done for. So you give us all the names of Mr. Big, right? We'll give you a, a new identity, a new passport, we'll, we'll get you, let you go and live in Canada for the rest of your life with Suzanne, right? So why, why have I got to do all that? Cause they'll because they'll bump you off, won't they? They'll how did you know it was me? Because you have to get evidence in court. So they go, oh, Pilkerton squealed. So you got to change all your life. Yes. Yeah. They've killed someone. Yeah. Yeah. D d well, look, you just know no, you're giving them in just to keep you from going to jail. So you don't want to spend the rest of your life in prison because you're involved in some or sorts or whatever. Just, how, how it it doesn't matter, Carl. No, listen. I'm just. How would the mafia know that I've said something? Because you say in court, those are the people. That's he's Mr. Big. He's Mr. So and So. He he ordered the hit. Don't you know anything? It's a lot of messing around, though, isn't it? But so I've no, got to leave this job, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah I think it. they might try XFM first. I'd have to. What? I'd, I'd have to. Bin Suzanne, would I? No, no she's going to live with you. You have to cut off all your ties with your friends and family, though. You can't contact them. You got to leave them behind. Would she have to change her haircut? <laughs> Possibly. <laughs> when did the murder happen? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what, so, what would the new identity be that you choose? What would you choose for yourself? What name? Probably, uh, uh, I wanted to be called Brett when I was a kid. Okay. Right. Brett um, what? <laughs> Brett Pilkington. Uh, you got to change your surname, yeah? Yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. M maybe go ex-directory. Where would you move to? Uh, probably, uh, probably back up north. No. Well, no. No, no don't do that. Don't do that. Um, I, can I suggest, um, maybe, uh, Brett Hansen and and go and live in in Australia or Canada or something. Well, maybe when they're not operating, maybe you know, and they just f forget it. You might have to change your identity as well. You might have to grow your hair. Well, you can't grow your hair, but maybe wear maybe, a wig or yeah. a moustache. What would you do? What would you wear? So like an afro or something. Something like that. That yeah. would be brilliant. <laughs> yeah, that, that would be, be absolutely brilliant. And I've got to do brilliant. all all that just because for five minutes I stood in a court thing. Yes. And said he's the one who did it. Yes. Yeah. Well, w why can't? Why can't I just wear the afro and the glasses <laughs> when I'm in the court? <laughs> Say my name's Brett, right? Yeah. Change my voice a bit. He did it, and they go, "Thanks very much." I go off. I carry on my life. That's I'm genius. Still coming that in I don't know why they have thought that. That is that. genius. I don't know. This case all the witness protection. Scheme. Why don't they do that? Yeah. So they go, "Well, I'll go to court as Brett Hansen <laughs> yeah. with an afro," and I don't like that. Yeah. Right. And then when I come out, I'm back to Carl Pilkington, <laughs> still talking like that, but <laughs> yeah. without the afro. That is what? perfect. Boom. You've got- why don't you call the FBI and say, oh, listen, I can save you billions <laughs> of dollars a year. You're a genius, Carl. All right. Well done. Or Brett, should I say. <laughs> don't look back into the sun, Libertines on XFM. I'm excited, Steve. It's that time. It's that time of the week. Go on. Well, Carl's- in a little film. Oh, that's what you're excited about. Yeah. Sorry, I thought you meant the, the show's almost over. Right? Yeah, no. Come on in, Carl. Right, so, uh, yeah, I'm in, I'm in One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Took a scene from it. Yeah. Gotta listen carefully in that. Uh, at the end, there'll be a question on, like, the clip that you've just heard, mm -hmm. it's sort of like, what they do in the Krypton Factor and stuff. So do you want to read out the prizes? Or just uh, yeah, there's a few of things. It's a uh, couple of rock and roll albums. Um, we've got the- Why German. is it called One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest? Um, I can't remember. I think it's explained in the book, but I don't remember. I haven't read it for many years. If someone knows, just a quick email to do. I'd like to know that. Ricky Dr. at xfm.co.uk. You can win yourself if you get the question right. The League of Gentlemen Series 3. We've got that Rock and Roll Legends again, the Best of Blondie, a Nature Program, and the Old Grey Whistle Test Volume uh, 3. So if you're uh, over so 50, well you'll enjoy that. Yeah. And just, uh, if you haven't seen the film, it's just about, uh, 
a, like a, what, what would you call it? A well, it's a guy like whose guy thinks he's going to get away with prison by going into a a, a mental institution. Mm. It was a new experiment, but he finds out he c can't get out and he's sort of trapped and. Well, people know it. Everyone knows what. Just right, play it. Just well, play it. I saw it last week. So just play it. All right. Yeah. Well, you know, I've uh, been observing you here now for the last four weeks, and I don't see any evidence of mental illness at all. Yeah, no, no, I'm not mental. I never, I never said I was. I mean, all right, I got, I got an E in history, but that isn't why I'm in here. I'm in here because I had to get away from, from the outside world. It's doing me head in. I've been working too hard, I'm stressed out. I've been working like loads of hours Monday to Friday. I've been working on a Saturday with Ricky and Steve, right? That's that's been doing me head in. People don't people think that's a laugh when it isn't. Right? You're busy right now, are you? You got something to do well, it, right now. See this is why I'm here today, Doctor, because he's doing me head in. What do you mean, sir? Well well he's doing me head in. I came here to get away from Ricky. He is just as bad. I'm smarter than him, ain't I? You're, you're an idiot, right? You just... <laughs> ah, we're just good friends. No, we're not friends. And if you were a friend, you wouldn't be doing that to me, Ed. How do you mean that? Well, don't ask... Come on, I'll show you. Oh, no. yes, Lord, yes, yes, you yes. Get him out. Get him off me! Get him off! Now, I gotta be just hold it right there. All right. Will you get off? Doctor, will you tell him? Come here, Phil. Don't hurt you, does he? Of course it does. That's it. Hold on to it. Not too hard. You'll crush all the air out of it. We're gonna... You normally do... Get off! You normally do the harder than that. No. It's warming up. Warming up. Warming up. Warming up. Warming up. Warming up. All right, be there. Get off! <laughs> See what I mean, Doctor? That's, that's what he's doing every day. The state of this. I don't know why you do it, because it's not as if you're going to crack it open. But I tried, didn't I? God damn it. At least I did that. <laughs> I love it, the effort. Yeah. It's almost, uh, I wonder if it's almost a strange premonition of the future. Yeah. You in some kind of home. Alright, well, uh... What's the question? What's the question, then? Uh... What result did I get in history? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Good. Right? Yeah, well, uh, tricky one, that. Ricky.Gervais at xfm.co.uk. I'll text. Will we take text? Um, I can't really bother to check right. the text. All right, then. Email. <coughs> oh. Thanks for that, Rick. Sneezy. Yeah. All right, I'll play, uh... Prinice Brothers, yeah, it's a lovely tune from their album, uh, what's it called? Yours, Mine and Ours. Blinded by the Stars. See me like a passion Blinded by the Stars from the Panice Brothers. We've uh, a couple of uh, texts. I do occasionally have a look at them. Go on. Um, we've had one here complaining. It doesn't say where it's from. It just says, Wow, really clever homophobic material. Genius. Switching off, idiots. Oh, I don't know what they mean. It was not clever homophobic material. <laughs> it, it was just homophobic. It, it well, was... well, what do they mean, though? But how is it homophobic? We weren't being anti-gay. We were saying we don't understand the gay world. And anything that's... We were querying and questioning and, it. Yeah, and Carl... See, this is what I mean. Carl gets us into trouble. I can't go through Chinatown no. anymore. No. It's not really a town, though, is it? It's not really a town. It's, it's more of a best. novelty street. A novelty street with restaurants. Yeah. But I can't, you know, and when we sort of like talk, we get uh, tarred with the same brush as him, because yeah. the man's an idiot, yeah. but we often say that. We're, you know, we are not homophobic. I don't think Carl's homophobic, he's confused. Mm. He's interested. He's got nothing against Chinese people, he's got a little theory that they don't age well. And these are the sort of things that come across, I mean, they're not meant to be homophobic and racist. They're showing that Carl, I don't know the PC term for this, is a bit mental. <laughs> yes. And, you know, I think we're doing our bit by letting him on... On the air. On the air as well. Like that complaint he got about that woman on, um, what's it called? Who are you looking at? Yeah. Because he said about... I, I, I don't even want to repeat it, but he said some, uh, you know... Yeah. Yeah, but I never meant to upset anyone with that. That's no, I know he didn't. No, I know he didn't, no. But, I mean, it's, it's on a website now. And, you know, to be fair, she does say it was Carl that said it, and, you know, yeah. we were the idiot presenters that him on air. But it's like, uh, Carl is bad for our reputation. Yes. Do you know what I mean? It's funny to be in a room with him, but then I want to sort of shake it off. Yeah. And I don't know what to do about Guilty it. Guilty by but, association. I know. 
Have you, what have you got to say for yourself, Carl, for the, all the, some of the stuff you come out with? What have you got to say? I mean, I know the answer. It's absolutely from the heart and genuine- Ignorance. <laughs> and confusion and interest. You, you haven't got a malicious bone in your body. Well. Well. Towards me, yes, but yeah, other people. But again, he's just honest with you. He says- he Well, don't you... repeat what he says. <laughs> no, <laughs> don't no. repeat it, just leave it. But it's not as bad as some other things, but he's, you know, he says, remember you just say that you, when you first met him, he, lo he looked a bit hard, but you got used to it. Yeah. Now that's from the heart. That's, a, that's like him sort of like being honest and nice, but he doesn't know what that- and we can take it, of course. Well. What- what have you got to say for yourself? I haven't got anything to say, really. I mean, <laughs> there's, been, no, there's been other weird stuff going on in the week and that. Go on. Uh, no, I might as well talk about it next week, because we're, we're wrapping up. All I'm saying is I talk about what's gone on. Yeah. Have you we got, got monkey news? Have we left monkey news behind? Monkey news! Come on! What happened? You can't offend monkeys! I'll tell you what is annoying. What? Steve's told me about a film that is about a monkey going off with a woman. Mm. The Charlotte Rampling thing where she- It's a film called Max Monomour. Yeah, she has an affair with a monkey. Go on. Yeah. Oh, what happened? You wouldn't like don't it. Go, we can't go into you it. wouldn't you like it. Monkeys. You wouldn't like it. It's not- it's not like- it's- it's weird and it, you wouldn't- Carl, it's not like a nature program where he wears a bowler hat and can talk. Okay. The major programs that you <laughs> seem to see. Yes, I've got to think I haven't seen that one. <laughs> yeah, no! Yeah. <laughs> Come on, do monkey news. Well, monkey news this week. Play the um, Oh, chimpanzee that monkey news, you f- Right, it's about this monkey that was knocking about in the 1950s. Right. Um, just, uh, <laughs> it was known in the sort of <laughs> LA area, right? Um, and apparently, um, again, I haven't really checked all this out, I've just picked up bits that, that look not. interesting. Yeah. No. Um, uh, wore a golden mask and like a cape and a, a leopard skin belt and stuff, right? So people didn't know but he, he was, was a monkey. monkey. Of course they didn't know, yeah. He just thought, they thought he was this bloke who's going around and he was helping out crime situations and stuff. <laughs> right, you're an idiot. So one, this disguise, that, that you see a, a, a three foot six bloke with arms the length of his body. No, but that's the funny thing, right? They knew, they sort of thought, it's a bit odd, you know, he's stocky, yet extremely flexible. Yeah, and hairy, because he only wore a mask and a belt. And a distinctive jawline and stuff. And then, uh, right. apparently, like, he used to sort of get to his... Nothing we say gets through, does it? You've, you've, you've decided you can picture this monkey going around going solving on. crimes, and it's... Telling you. Let him finish the story. Time's running out. So he sort of get to its crime by, like, swinging from the trees and stuff. Of course stuff, it would, right? Yeah. Well, people just thought, it's a normal fella. Of course. Then what happened was, he... This is the bit that's gonna annoy me, isn't it? He helped some fellas out, like, you know, and for a, re for a reward, they were like, do you want some money? You know, you've, you've helped save our lives during a crime and stuff. Mm. Do you want some money in that? And he just went straight for the shopping bags, got a couple of bananas and apples, <laughs> right? And as he was bent down, looking into the bag, getting the bananas and apples, they pulled his mask off, little monkey. So he wasn't allowed to work for the police anymore? It, it ended there. Sure. Weird, isn't it? <sighs> Rick, can I tell you the meaning of One Flew of the Cuckoo's Nest? Yeah. Can we never speak of monkey news again? Yeah. It comes apparently from an American children's nursery rhyme, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, all good children go to heaven, some fly east, some fly west, some fly over the, the cuckoo's, cuckoo's nest. nest. Brilliant. Uh, now thanks to Ian for emailing that in. Uh, shall I give, um, someone the prizes? Yeah. Phil Corbett, there you are, the first one I pulled out, he correctly guessed that it was E. It was an E that Carl got in history, the only qualification he's got, and it's an E. You know that woman? <laughs> judge, the, judge the monkey news based on that. <laughs> Go on. That woman who went out with a monkey. What? It's a film. It's a film. It was Charlotte Rampling. In the film. I don't know who played the monkey. Does she have any kids? What, with the monkey? In the film? Yeah, I'm just, I'm just thinking if I'm gonna get it out and stuff. No. Hmm. Why? Oh, cause that would have been interesting. Well no, it's just that. The problem there is, the kids would always look more like the dad. 